Uh, <laughs> really? Is that the first thing what? that came to mind? <laughs> really? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Well, so, 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 someone didn't do the ding dong. She got into the edibles by accident. Oh, no. <laughs> it's where she lives, right? Oh, it's what's man. in that quiche, right? Yeah. It's not like a quiche Lorraine or anything. It's just like it's, it's just like chong. it's just like weed and eggs mixed together. I'm so tired. It's true. You really, it's just an omelet you stuck in a pie crust, basically. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No. And uh, I love the way that baked tomatoes taste. So. Right. Welcome to this cooking edition of Iron Gods. <laughs> right. Welcome to Iron Gods session 44, the start of book three, The Choking Tower. Um. <laughs> on rpgmp3.com. Uh, please visit us at the website. Visit us at the Discord. I'm close, slowly actually locking all of the forum posts that we've had since 2003 so that you bastards can be pushed to the Discord and so I can stop having um, terrible, terrible um, hackers just post nonsense on the forums where nobody's really looking. So come to the Discord. We can chat there where there are no nasty hacker bot monsters. Well, there are, but only ones we invite. <laughs> and, and, and and Discord is not yet uh, uh, tainted by Microsoft, uh, who is purchasing Discord. I saw, you know, I saw Skype that. Skype right now. What yeah. do they say? Eighty billion they were purchasing it for. So much nah, I was, want to say it was ten, which is ten. It's just, still a lot of money for a chat thing, right? Yeah. Where am I going? Trying to find my thing on the phone, so I keep an eye on you. Not that I don't trust you, but I don't trust you not to do stupid shit. Here we go. Speaking of Microsoft, there's my Microsoft ad. There it goes. Always a Microsoft ad. There we are. Beautiful. Ads are in. Oh, Microsoft buying Bethesda right now. Yeah, that's it's buying everybody. Happening. Guessing Microsoft has too much money. They should come and give us some. <laughs> that's what they should do. Why am I seeing a Forest Blessing spell floating around? What are you doing? Are oh, you just testing your spell, spell doofers? Yeah, and You're well, that's a feat, this. really, or arcane discovery that I took as a feat. Oh, forest blessing. Yeah. Do we want to cast talk any about wizard the spell that appears on the wizard and druid spell? Step plus one, cast a level, and with plus one to the save DCs. Oh, that's pretty nice. Right. Plus, I can use uh, gems to replace any material components. So I'm just going to have a sack full of gems in case I need powdered diamond, and I forgot to prepare it for some, you know, cleric spell I want to cast or something. Okay, um, yes, now would be the time to um, tell people what you got. Who wants to go first? As you leveled from six to seven, I believe, this last time. Indeed. We did, we did, we leveled, and it was great. Yeah, according to oh, the Facebook also, community post, we had a, uh, a swarm of bears in a tree that we yeah, defeated that in between. That was, that was <laughs> funny, actually. Um, so uh, Nick is out today. He is traveling abroad and spreading his his love to the masses. No! Was anyone but Nick I'd be worried that there's some kind of bodily fluid transmission with that statement? But his <laughs> love is his taint, really. <laughs> oh. What's the name of the broad he's traveling? Oh, anyway. Okay, who wants to go first? <laughs> You're bad. Yeah. Did you see I posted my, the mug you got me on the uh, Discord channel in the snug, by the way, Mr. Wit? Miss Wit. <gasps> Miss! <laughs> I have officially become one of the bros. Mr. Wit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Either that or we work for, either that or we work for Starfleet. <laughs> And I got my uh, fi like uh, my uh, gift from uh, Sir Christmas, the uh, whiskey bullets. Tonight. Yeah, nice. check that shit out. Who got those for you? Gosh, you know what? Um, I want to say it was Thing, right? No, it was me. Oh shoot! Those I don't do bullets. Sweet. Thing doesn't. Do Thing won't send you bullets, but people in Texas will. <laughs> That's just be thankful they came in a box, Bill. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> I, am so, I am sorry, Hal. I mean, ultimately, they're just bullet-shaped pieces of metal, but it seemed appropriate. I don't know whether they're good in a glass. They seemed pretty heavy from the description. They are, but I got a nice, uh, decent, heavy tumbler, so that works. Yeah, that's what you need, man, I, I think. 
I, I'll go first if no one else is going to jump out. Um, I, uh, am, I went with another uh, level of rogue. So there wasn't a whole lot of change there. There was uh, my um, base attack bonus did go up one, but uh, none of the saves or anything. I got a bunch of skill points. So I added to the usual suspects there, but I did add a couple to linguistics. So I picked up uh, Infernal and Abyssal. Plus shopping. Yes, and there has been... Plus a feat. Uh, yes, well, the feat is kind of, you know, spoiler alert, it was one that I kind of already agreed I had to take technologists. So. You did, because uh, partway through the game, we realized in order to use anything, including epics, you needed the technologist feat. Yeah, and honestly, that was a... Uh, 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 oversight on my part or everyone's part and so I wanted to correct them. Well, I think that came when we actually started reading stuff a bit closer, honestly. But that's one massive issue with a lot of these items, right? They, I think you're going to have to hand wave the simple stuff but anything that requires like any kind of knowledge of understanding is going to need a, the actual feat, which means most of the party can't use half of the stuff you find. Possibly. Yeah. You don't want Alexander using everything because... It's a liability. <laughs> I also uh, uh, basically uh, got my short swords magical, so each are plus one now. Uh, I, I did get a uh, uh, adamantine short sword and made that magical, so now I've got two. And then, um, gosh, what else gear wise? I thought that was it, but I wrote down. Did you put sneaky on your weapons? Yes. Yeah. It sneaky, the sneaky trait on the weapons. So, um, okay, yeah, why did I write that down? I can have sworn I wrote that down. <clears throat> that basically allows me to once a day per weapon, um, get a uh, flanking uh, attack to get my sneak attacks, even if they are not flat footed or surprised. So it's kind of like another way to get a sneak when I need it. And that's pretty, if I, that's pretty good. Yeah, in the future, and if I take the uh, like the the hunter's strike feat, I get an extra boost on that a day. So it'll be two per weapon per day. So that'll be that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. So did you you actually <laughs> replaced one of your weapons with an adamantine one? Yes. So you lost the drukite one? No, I had a I had a regular masterwork one. Okay. So your Drukite one is now just enchanted. Correct. So it's now an adamantine Drukite veined plus one short sword with sneaky. Correct. Jesus, a lot of fucking money in that fucking set of weapons. Let's hope he doesn't get captured. Yeah. Right. And you bought drippy gloves, right? Oh, shit. You're right. Where did, uh, yeah. Very, thank you. <laughs> um, that was the... Uh, uh, I can never. I could never. Deliquescent uh, gloves, which any weapon that I hold allows me to do an extra one die six corrosive slash acid damage. But you also do corrosive damage with touch as well, right? Correct. So I can actually um, do damage to oozes and uh, molds. Lots of small, small children. And at night. Random ice creams and sandwiches you might be eating. Exactly. Like, oh, I forgot to turn that off. Dissolve the small child you were petting on the head. Whoops. <laughs> I mean, can you turn it off, or do they just constantly work? Ah, or do you have to take them off? While you look at that, who's going next? <laughs> uh, I'll go. Yay! Uh, so Alexander um, did a lot of crafting for the party because he's <laughs> crafty with those things. Crafty. Um, so for himself, uh, I bought a lot of spells because Hal was generous there. I was, not wasn't I? Yes. Um, uh, in fact, for most of them, I was able to pay the cheaper price of copying them from a spell book rather than buying them as scrolls. Um, so for my new level four spells, which I already had thanks to Morrow's spell book, I had Animate Dead, uh, Bone Shatter, and Enervation. I have added in, um, let's see, my fourth, oh, she's so many spells that I just bought, too. Um, a lot of spells. I've got tons of new spells. Uh, most of the Technic spells up to level four. Um, 
three spells, things I need to enchant. I also enchanted for myself a headband of vast intelligence, uh, plus four, Ooh. because I it is restricted to my alignment and skill set, which makes it crap for resale value, but I plan to never take it off and just make it better and better. Um, I also have a new belt that is enhancing my strength and dexterity that has the same restrictions. Uh, a blessed book. Uh, tools of amazing manufacture that actually let me uh, build stuff faster so that I can actually craft for the party and not take months of time. Uh, uh, my own personal portable hole to hold gear that is also alignment restricted. <laughs> because uh, 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 hold on a second. That portable hole that was for the group, you made not alignment, alignment restricted? restricted. No. Okay. No. This is my personal portable hole. I said personal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing to stop him throwing the group's portable hole in his portable hole. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, my blessed book is also alignment restricted, so... <clears throat> Fewer people can peek at my new spells. Um, but, and but Tatia, Tatia, Nicodemus can. He's neutral, too. <laughs> yes, and if he ever learns the appropriate skill to a sufficient level, he can uh, maybe try and read my spell book. Right? I think you might have to start taking some wizard levels. Cool. So, um, and then I bought from Torch because they offer some discount, a lesser rod of extend, so I can make some of my spells last longer. Right. And a lesser rod of merciful. So if I want to actually drop the party when they're uh, confused or turn into werewolves, <laughs> or, or we take prisoners, I can do a merciful fireball or single person merciful bone shatter. Yes, Ooh, that, that would be a thing. <laughs> you can mercifully bone shatter people. Yes. That's the thing Do you that can get happen. the morphine first or something? Well, it's like you make you break their bones, but not not damagingly. You just well, kind of bend, you bend like them like softly. Or is it more like when we try to get out of bed in the morning and it's just achy all over and it's not really broken? You know? Even I mean, in your teeth. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, and, oh, I took the uh, Force Blessing Arcane Discovery, which allows me any uh, sp any spells that are on both the Wizard and Druid list, I cast at plus one caster level and plus one DC. And I can substitute gems for material components for all arcane spells, which all spells to me are arcane. So, so I converted some of my spare cash to a bunch of gems so I don't have to worry about having 2,000 gold worth of powdered diamond. Pretty nice. See how much she cares about you. So very much. All right, wait, what did you get? Cool. Um. So I'll go over my sheet. Um. Well, first I got to pass out some skill ranks, and after discovering what it has and hasn't really come in handy, I decided to toss some more into sense, motive, survival, and perception. <clears throat> So that way I would be better at dealing with other people. Um, just kind of help floof that up because I threw all this shit in the handle animal and it did nothing for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, that, well, I guess maybe if I really wanted him to do a backflip for everybody, then he could have done it. <laughs> What's that? Except for now, he's a giant monster. This is also true! I uh, because Large. Yeah, he's large now, so things happen to him, too. Uh, so I passed out some skill ranks. I got a cool... Well, it's in the making. I, I decided to throw some cash into a headband. Um... Of alluring charisma. Right, because uh, you need more charisma, right? Absolutely! <laughs> oh my gosh, everything that my character is based on is charisma. So the more charisma that I have and the cooler, well, I guess, I mean, the cooler Tatia looks, <laughs> the That's better. Funny. 
Right. Uh, that's true. So, yeah. Hooray charisma. Hooray. Uh, so that's happening. Uh, what else is there? I didn't do anything with my chain shirt or my shield. Uh, uh, leadership. What's that? Ah, I'm yeah. Leadership. I took on leadership. I'm I'm now looking at my my feeds and things like that. I took on leadership, so now I have a cohort. And I will. Where where's the cohort sheet? Under ah, there it is. Silas Snootington is. Hey, he's cohort. a Snootington. Silas Snootington. He spelled no, no. fun. Not a snotting so uh, a level five swashbuckler. Um, nope, he isn't. No? Nope, he's not. <laughs> he's, a level, he? he's a level one swashbuckler. Well, then why does it say five? It doesn't, if you're actually... It totally right. does! Go look at the sheet! Okay. I'm going hey, to look... Hey, Evan! Uh, what does that word say right here? The one that I'm going to highlight. What does that say? Level. What is the number above it? Five. Yeah. Okay, but look, look, to the left, look to the left where it says class and it says swashbuckler inspired blade one comma. So what's missing on that character sheet you can find on configuration, but it actually lists his classes out completely. Well, I thought how it was just like, here's a level five character. I am. He's a level five character. What's this? He is level five. He's just a level one swashbuckler, level four investigator. Yeah, he's a split class. Ah, so there we go. So that's what he is. Um, so we're going to go. I'm going to let Hal explain him a bit more because he's actually the one that made the guy. He is an inspired blade swashbuckler at level one. And he is a major domo investigator at level four. So basically, he's there to help the party do stuff and have things. Hooray! Sorry about that. And to, and to manage our vast estates. Done. Yes. Well, I mean, he's designed to manage your stuff, basically. So he can arrange for things. He's also really great with languages. Uh, and he's not too awful with a rapier, incidentally. Ooh. All right. Yeah, so also, I got also, he has a great ability to share teamwork feats with the entire party. Yay! That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What we like about him. Mm -hmm. He's there for you. Wait, how many how many other followers do you have, by the way? Me? Mm -hmm. Do I I thought that I only got a no. cohort. I thought it was a cohort or the other. No, nope, you got the others as well. Uh what was your lead? Is Evan learning to tap dance or clog dance or something? What's going on there? Oh, sorry. That I'm really distracted because um, I've got a puppy who is tossing her rawhide everywhere. Oh, is it the dog that's dragging, is making the noise? That's pretty yes, sweet. Yes, it's the dog that's making all the hackets. Oh, then that's dog. okay. As long as it's not Evan tossing his rawhide everywhere. No, 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 no. no. It's just, it's the puppy. She's excited. So she's throwing her bone all over the place. And I do not have carpet in here. So it's just like, wow, everywhere. I mean, it's got to be better than Evan throwing his bone all over the place. <laughs> no, that's wrong okay he does that, he <laughs> makes it slippery i thought yeah. so too okay so okay. we need to figure it out so you uh you, your charisma is what so what, what are we figuring out what's your charisma modifier uh uh my charisma it's massive right is massive oh yeah it? it's a five so you, i thought you were a five uh, anyway I thought you no, were no. yeah you got you With got that uh, you got that headband now so that that plus goes up. Do, are we considering that I have it on now? Because I thought we had to wait until it was finished. Because we, ha I, uh, Alexander has to make it. Right, but that only took me a few, day few days. Oh. And we've been here like thirty-four days or something. Well then, let's go ahead and do that. I could totally take care of that. So what is it? Plus four, plus two. Let's see, I. I believe just plus two for hers. Okay, so she's at six then. So with a level seven and six, that's 13. She does not have great renown. She is not renowned for fairness and generosity. She has no special powers. Failure, aloofness, and cruelty are not a thing. 
She does have a familiar special mount of Animal Companion, which takes it to 11. Technically, the cohort is of a different alignment, but it's still aligned with Desna, so I'm not going to count that one. So 11, Stronghold or Base, you do not have yet. Moves around a lot. I guess that's technically true. So you're at 10. Cause the death of other followers. That is not true. So if we uh, call yeah. it 10, that means your cohort could be a maximum level of 7, which it cannot be. And you get 6 first level followers. Ooh. Uh, yes. I think leadership equals 7 plus 5. Starting level equals 12. What is that from? Leadership that's, score that's equals correct. character level plus the character mod, reputation from the point of view of the core cohort or follower you are trying to attract, raises and lowers your leadership score. I gotcha. I gotcha. You, you landed at an 11, which gives you a seventh level maximum cohort plus six first level followers. Correct, Mundo. Until that bard you pissed off starts slandering you in every bar in town. Right, that fucking bad. Fuck that guy. So what, uh, if I have followers, then what is my reputation? What do you mean, what is your reputation? So your, your leadership score is currently 11. Let's set it at that. Because you currently travel around a lot and you already have an animal companion. It brings it down by minus three, but that headband increases it by plus one. So technically you're 7 plus 6, which is 13, minus 3, which is 10. Did I say 10 or 11? Did I say 11? Yes, I said 11. How did I land at 11 with that calculation? Hang on, 7 plus 6. Oh, so yeah, no, 7 plus 10 then. You should be 10. You're 5 first level followers. Did I give you a plus or something? No, I didn't. You're 5 first level followers. When you get a base of operations, you might actually get an increase in leadership. I have a feeling every adventure path part's going to give me a new place I want to take over as our base, though. Yeah, I'm getting or that impression as well. I'm not going to lie. I'm getting that impression. Hey, we almost had that tavern and until the Kellys took it over. Mm -hmm. yep. And barbarians. And, you know, we could, have, we could have tried to make the excavator a mobile base, but that would have taken a lot of work. Yeah, right. Been too that would have that would have taken a bunch of people dedicated to following you around and doing stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So then I guess on top of that, the only other exciting thing that happened were some spells. I so I took on Doom at level one and at level two, protection from evil communal, and at level three I took on prayer. Oh Kitty leveled up and got some items too. Yeah, yes. Kitty, Kitty did level up. Let's not lie. Kitty leveled up a lot. Yeah, Kitty did some cool things. Did Kitty get items? Have they been added to the character? What did you make? Uh, no, that is something that I will go ahead and take care of. I was under the assumption that I wouldn't be able to add those yet. Uh, so I've just been kind of excitedly waiting. Mm. Bloop, 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 bloop. There we go. Nicodemus. Character. Name. Are you good? Are you done? Me? Yeah. Talking about all my cool shit? No. No. Okay. What else did you what? get? So the kitty cat, I figured that it was useless to put anything else in fly because no matter how much I wanted him to, you weren't going to let him sprout wings. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> this is a magical game. It is possible for him to acquire fly at some point. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I figured I would not do that and uh, instead would focus uh, his skills in his acrobatics and his climb uh, and as well as his stealth. That's good. Um, Does he have a climb speed? Because tigers, I mean, go up trees. No. Wait a minute. Does he? No, he doesn't. Does he only give one rank right now? What do you mean one rank? Oh, it says that I have seven of eight filled in. I guess maybe I don't have as many. Yeah, points. he doesn't get a lot of skills because he's not actually that smart. Yeah, I thought we'll fix that was... soon. Honestly, his skills are mostly led by his um, by that table more so than his actual abilities at this point. Yeah, truly, it is so. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pump up the stealth by one because that's one that's down so now the three main ones are at eight and swim is down at six 
Perception's at two because he's a cat. <laughs> and a cat. <laughs> That's so I'm pretty kitty. But yeah, um, his attacks got stronger. Yeah, they did. Well, he got bigger. Right. Yeah. He, got, he got a little bit easier to hit, though, but then you put armor on him. Did you take into account the fact that he was large when you made bolt that armor, by the way? Uh-oh. Uh... <laughs> asks. Just saying. I mean, it doesn't really matter all that much. It's just a handful of money. Did you buy barding, or did you buy armor? I assume it was barding. For... I, Did you buy armor for the cat? What? No. Uh, so for the cat, I got. Let me look at my notes. I have my spreadsheet for the stuff I enchanted. If you need it. Uh, do, do, do an amulet of natural armor. Oh, okay. You gave him an amulet of natural armor. That's good. I. Uh, did we also go with the Amulet of Mighty Fists? Uh, yeah, plus one with Merciful, I think. Oh, wow. That's Is it plus one and Merciful, or just Amulet of Mighty Fists with Merciful? Oh, yeah. I think it was Merciful that she thought she could uh, toggle. Yes. And, and Belt of Mighty Giant Fists with Merciful. So it's, yeah, just Merciful. It's not plus one Merciful. It's just Merciful. Yes. Yes. That. that and then be. belt of giant strength. Cool. Oh, really? Is that for you? With Who's plus for? two for the cat. You've given the cat a belt of giant strength. Yeah. Really? Why not? Uh, I guess why not? Yeah, it's, exactly. It's like the only cat in the world wearing a belt right now. Who gives a shit? If my cat is big and strong. I should have made him um, a handy haversack as, like, panniers on the sides. Yeah, <laughs> right. They're going to, like, pull, pull all of his shit out of it. Ah. Uh, well, well, yeah. Handy haversacks are dirt cheap to make. Yeah, they're pretty cheap to make. You can almost, we, we kind of forgot Alexander's new companion. It's not really a class feature, but... Uh, oh, you mean, you mean Zombie Dregs? I think he, she was there anyway. <laughs> But uh, she was already she, there. She carried the cart in the last session. Right. And she's she's lying low though, because you know she lying might low, the, the, like the that. town. Lying the low. So cat can also now do grab, pounce, and rake. Sweet. So that's cool. Which is pretty great. You should look at pounce, by the way. It's going to change how you fight. So pounce. I can look it up. Yeah, you should. It might be on the character sheet. I don't know whether I put the text into it or not. Um, I, may, I may have done that because I'm a kind and generous GM. Oh, you are. You are. Thanks. Um, let me see. Nicodemus additional pounds. Yes, when a creature with this special attack makes a charge, it can make a full attack, including oh. rake attacks if the, if the creature also has the rake ability, which it does. Nope. Charging is a special full round action that allows you to move up to twice your speed and attack during your action. You must move before your attack, not after. You must have a clear path toward the opponent and nothing can hinder your movement, such as difficult terrain or obstacles. After moving, you may make a single melee attack. You get a plus two bonus on the attack roll and take a negative two penalty to your AC until the start of your next turn. A charging character gets a plus two bonus on combat maneuver attack rolls made to bull rush an opponent. Even if you have extra attacks such as from having a high enough base attack bonus or from using multiple weapons, you only get to make one attack during a charge. Sounds good. So, to sum it up, I can charge, and then I also get to do the bite and the claw. Correct. Yeah. Cool. Correct. Awesome. And because the speed is 40, twice my speed, does that mean I could go up to 80? Yes. Whoa. 
So that's pretty impressive, isn't it? I mean, it's something. Absolutely. And he also has the rake ability, so I think if he hits with both claws, he gets additional. What does his rake say? So the rake is a creature with the special attack gains mm -hmm. extra natural attacks under certain conditions, typically when it grapples its foe. Yeah, it's a gra it's doesn't, it doesn't work like it used to, but it's a grappling thing, oh, is rake. Okay. He has to do the grab. So he also has grab, but I don't know why a tiger would do that. Unless it wanted, unless it wanted to rake. Drag mm -hmm. you off into the jungle and eat you later. You know. Yeah, I mean, I grab, grab's an odd one for the tiger to do when it can do three attacks around and then it could grab you and do just the rake. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Is there anything else that I'm missing? I mean, I don't know. Really is fucking up that bone, dude. Yeah. Oh, now she is chewing on the metal leg of the desk. We're, we're really hearing that, by the way. Yeah. So sorry. Take take her teeth out just so she gums it instead. I'm just gonna I'm gonna mute it anytime I'm not talking. Okay, but that's all the time, dude. <laughs> I think she had um I think she got like didn't she get like another mystery and a couple of spells too? Yeah, she got a mystery. Yeah. That is a very large drink, whatever it is. Oh, um, so I was using sign language. Um, yes, it is a very big drink. No, I did. I, uh, my puppy, you're so beautiful and you're munching on things. Chair leg. Oh, I didn't. I thought that I would have written it down, but apparently I did not. It was terrible. Did you get Moonbridge? No, you got Moonlit. Did you get Moonlit Script? What did I you get? did. Moonlit Script. Oh, yeah, cool. which I was going to read on it, but apparently I'm just going to have to pull it up from my list. Okay. It's, it, it gives you Augur and Divination. as There you go. It's Thank spin. you, oh, wise GM, for oh, well writing done. your beautiful... I uh, shortened version of what that thing does. Yeah, but yes, it's something that I get according and, uh, to the lore mystery. And at the fifth level, the writing takes the form of a divination with 90% effectiveness. At eighth level, which we're not at yet, the writing manifests as a casting of commune with no material component required. The end. Cool. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh -huh. Anything else? I'm actually kind of interested to know a bit more. I, I guess whenever I took on this leadership feat, I was under the impression that I was getting a cohort or this other group. Nope, you're getting both. So I'm definitely going to have to look a little bit more into this to make sure that I understand how to lead this group of followers. Just right. bring them with us and they'll all die in the first encounter, so. That's right, and then, you'll, then your leadership level plummets and then everybody leaves you. So what is it that affects the leadership reputation? Is that something you will give? Because there's mods for that. Yeah, so I gave you some mods, so that's why you're at a 10. So basically you move around a lot and you already have an animal companion. That gives you a minus two for the animal companion and a minus Correct. one for moving around. Yes. Ah, now I know why I was calculating something different because I did it as if I only had a cohort and no followers. So I only included the mods for the cohort. I didn't include the mods for the followers. That's where I went off. Okay, cool. I will fix that though. No worries. You, you don't need to. Just say your leadership is 10. We can recalculate as we move through because it will change as your charisma changes and it will change as a bunch of other things change. Cool. Um, so groovy then. On my sheet for charisma for the extra bonus, when I add my item. Mm -hmm. I did it as a misc bonus, then you know it comes from an item. You, if you uh, click on, if you click on, I think if you click on charisma, I could be lying mm -hmm. to you. I think there's a, if you wave over charisma on your sheet, you can also just put it in the temp 
piece. Yeah, yeah, you could put it in temp, or if you wave over charisma, there's a little cog thing. Oh no, that just tells you the bonuses. That yeah, do I could put a note down in there that'll just, tell you my tips. Just bump it in, just bump it into temp. So, Hopefully you never remove it. it so I'll put temp. a, a yeah, temporary put in, in there, a five, and then I'll put the note in there. Or so you the put it in two. It's the bone, just the, the additional. It's two. Yeah, just, just whatever the bonus is, it's giving you. Yeah. It'll add where, it in. Where did the number five just come from? Somebody said five or something. Is that because it used to be five? Next to the five. Huh, yeah, that's probably yeah. a word. Put I was it like, in the where? temp box. Put a two in the temp. Okay. I have put a two in there, and now the modifier has gone from five to six. Which is good, which is where Yay! it is. Yay! Which then changes everything, right? It's changing all yeah. the things. Her so AC, her spells. Really yeah, including like, her armor class, which is obscene. Yeah. I need to get something that does my int for AC, because... It should actually affect... Does it affect her to hit her charisma? I don't think it does, does it? Maybe? I don't know. She's got a lot of wang attached to that. Yeah, there's a lot of wang attached to charisma in this character. <laughs> all right, so, bully go. Bully Goat, not uh, here. <laughs> is, not, is not currently present. I believe he got some items. Let me check what he got. He increased, so he purchased new armor. He is now completely encased in Mithral full plate plus one and wielding a Mithral buckler plus one. So he's literally fully armored at this point. Yep. Because of his abilities as a fighter, it literally has tiny effect on his um, his dexterity. His armor class has actually gone up significantly. His armor class is now 30. Oh, shit. Wow. Yeah. Right. He also has a myth. He has a ring of sustenance now and a belt of incredible dexterity plus two. So he's even more dexterous. Uh, he's legitly getting good at this point. Did he, I believe, did he get that adamantine glaive? I believe he may have taken an adamantine glaive as well. Yes, yeah, that was a plus one adamantine glaive. So he's now doing awesome, terrible damage to robots at this point. Which is um, a great scam. <laughs> he got a feat. I think he took mobility from what I can see here. He did, yeah. Which means he gets a plus four dodge bonus to armor class against attacks of opportunity when he's dancing around. Uh, beyond that, I think that's all he got except for a bump to his armor training. So it's all good. His uh, armor training is now at level two, so he's he's fighting. I don't know whether he rolled oh, for his different levels on that, eh? Cool. I don't know whether he rolled for his hit points. Oh, yeah, his armor training goes up and up and up, and he just gets better and better and better. That's right. I, think, I haven't rolled my hit points yet either. I think his hit points... Did go up because he didn't have 65 before. I don't know. I don't remember. But 65 seems good, so we'll leave it at that. So yes, si Silas is a character you will meet momentarily. Oh, I did what? other things. Plus two shield, plus three armor. What? What? Your plus three armor? What? Yeah. How did you afford plus three armor? Because I did it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's written on my sheet here. <laughs> what? I didn't think anyone could make plus three armor yet. But I don't know. I can't, but... Huh? I can't make plus three armor, but that's you know. Why, you do, did I get, uh... plus... Why do I have plus three armor? I do have mithril plus three shield plus two down here. Oh, the spreadsheet. What does that mean? Well, she got mithril armor. Oh, you got mithril too. Yeah, and I've a plus had two it. shield, I think. Oh, you already had a mithril shirt, right? Yeah, yeah. We, she and I got our a plus one mithril shirt at the same time. I got mine with a uh, two kite inlay, though. Correct. Poor Rakez too. Sad. <laughs> It's just a hunk of burning love. <laughs> he is a hunk of hunk of burning love. All right, we can figure it out. You're in torch. Um, Alexander is making stuff. What are the rest of you doing? Chink, 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 chink. 
hopefully asking questions about this place. We're going to go visit a Vondale and Cassandra Lee, the prophet of unity, and some of those things that I don't have the skills uh, to talk about. Uh, I am Denve. Yeah, that. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's okay. It's off to the west, so if you follow the road out of Torch to the west, to the River of Daggers, you'll be able to follow it down, and you'll end up in Aya Denve. It's about 140 miles on foot. Oh, wow. pa pa passing by something called the Choking Towers on the... Yeah, there's a few things you'll pass on the way. <laughs> yeah, we have that high, high up map, I want to say, that kind of had some of the surrounding area, right? Yeah, it should be in your little book. Yep. Should I pop it yeah, for everybody? Yeah, I mean, we kind of mentioned a couple of things that we we're going to do, like, because we have so much time, downtime, if you will, is going to try to find out some of that information as well, but also, um, you know, not necessarily directly related to the adventure path, but wanted to kind of try to see if anybody new has, like, established themselves in town to see if anybody's trying to dredge up Sandville's old contacts or, you know, businesses because Alexander's concern, and really all of our concern, is that we know he was working with the Technic League. Our concern is is that if they haven't heard from Sam, they'll have gotten their cut his stuff in a while. They might send someone poking to find out what happened to him. And they're going to kind of try to, they're, they're going to sort of find us, if you will, like in his business, right? Mm -hmm. Hopefully he was just low level and trying to get his way in and not really, you know... So, so if you look from Torch, you'll head west, and then you'll follow the western side of the River of Daggers down to Ayadenbe. You actually don't go past the Choking Tower, you kind of go north of it by about 50 miles. Well, that's good. Yeah, it sounds like a bad place, even though it's the name of the book, so you'll probably end up there at some point. <laughs> well, and, and what's the chokers we found slain around the... It uh, was. It was array. chokers that you found slain around the receiver array. Yeah, they were the people that kind of swallowed uh, Helion's doctrine, hook, line, and sinker, and sort of paid for it at the end. when they, they, used, they were no longer useful, right? Probably. Um. So, um, you're hanging out for a, a month or so here? Uh, yes, roughly. Okay, what are you doing? Where are you keeping your horrid zombie? Uh, in the cave leading to the under ruins in Torch, I believe. So you're having it swim in there and, and go up that corridor and kind of lurk inside that cave? Yeah, yeah. Rest there, protect yourself, but, you know. I mean, it doesn't need to rest there. It's a zombie. Right. Okay. Yeah. Protect yourself, you know. Are you doing anything to stop it? Like when you rest a plate on a table, Hal. Oh, okay. Are you doing anything to stop it rotting while it's in there? Um, I'll go down and cast general repose once a week, I guess. Okay. Would I be I, anything with heal, or would that be too much? Yeah, you should heal? cast. You should cast your biggest heal spell on it. He, heal would <laughs> be ah, sad. that's what I'll do. Yes. <laughs> heal harms undead. So it actually, it just, it just harms the undead. It wouldn't help preserve it. Right. No. So basically casting healing magic on the undead causes damage. Okay. Uh, I mean, you, you would have to cast the inflict version of light wounds or serious wounds in order to heal it. Functionally, I mean, rotting really doesn't do anything besides make her more disgusting. She'll never become a skeleton or anything, if I, as I understand it. But No, she won't. She'll always be a zombie. So the problem you've got is, you know, do you want to see her dragging your cart around? You've got 140 miles to go. You're going to have her dragging your cart about as literally a rotten hunk of flesh with crap dropping off. It's not going to be very pleasant to ride behind, is it? It's <laughs> efficient, and it didn't seem to piss off the cleric of Bry anymore. If she would like to replace her with mechanical legs, we could go that route. But... That's funny, right? A little mechanical <laughs> legs. I mean, she sees the sees the she saw the benefit in it for the moment. But I mean, a lot of people are, are okay. Fair enough for now. But we need a ne necklace. Uh, we need to inscribe in, in a necklace of potpourri. Well, and for, and for the equivalent, <laughs> she's an admin that opposed us. Now she's dead and pulls our cart. Is is probably going to give us street cred and keep you know at least the low level monsters away. 
I mean, she's still a giant, and now she's a rotten zombie giant, so she's pretty intimidating. There's a sign around her neck that says, if you think I'm ugly, you should see my mom. <laughs> That's horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Alexander's spending hours a day in the um, forge, I assume. Yes, uh, for the first week at least, I'm going to spend eight hours a day uh, as I make my tools, and then <clears throat> uh, I can reduce that significantly and actually hang out in the bar and inquire to people uh, with clever and um, subtle ways of asking about if they have you know, any information on, like, you know, of Andale and Cassandra Lee. It's like, oh, have you been to this town of Andale? I hear they have a good bar slash winery slash tavern brewery. Ah, fellow meatbag. Yeah. It's so oh. awful. Yeah, and then, you know, see if they look like they're an arcane caster because I might be able to learn spells from them, you know. Ah, fellow meatbag. The uh, name uh, Cassandra Lee ring a bell, prophet of unity. Uh. So, so Cassandra Lee gets no uh, awareness whatsoever. Unity, not at all. Uh, several people tell you that they know that Iadenve does not have an inn, um, although it does have what it's called the high home, which is like a community place where you can stay. Like a hostel? It's more like a meeting place, like a community meeting place, but visitors get to stay there. So um, what you learn is that um, Aya Denve is uh, home to many worshippers of, oh my God, what's the God? Ah. Uh, How do you oh, spell that? Aya uh, Is that just one? Yeah, it's the, it's the God. Ah, that's right. <laughs> As my brain is just frozen. And I've totally that, that was written on the wall where the holy hand grenade was found. Isaiah <laughs> Denve is for. Oh my God, what's his name? Well, that was in the notes we had of um, about this from uh, um, Kolgara. Kolgara, yeah. Worship of Aristil, was it? Aristil, that's right. They worship Aristil. Like, well, that's like, like a druid god? Like a... Shot into still waters? Aristil? Aristil. E R A S T I L. Aristil. E R A S T I L. L. Aristil. Yeah, it's er er Aristil. Uh, so, if. Let's backwards. If you would like to make me a knowledge religion check based on that information. I would love to. Wouldn't you both? What is your religion uh, knowledge? Uh, overall, 11. Oh, God, no. Okay, yours is better than mine. Only oh, roll cool. pretty comparably. Oh, you just <laughs> yeah. roll charisma. I don't know if you didn't roll at all. So Alexander knows that Aristil is one of the oldest gods of the humans in the Inner Sea region. Um, he is the god of hunting and farming and family. So everybody in this area worships a, a seemingly decent... He is, a, he, is a very, he is a very good god. He is a a uh, lawful good god. Cool. So not like Kellid technology haters or, you know. They are, <laughs> they are, they, they are not big on technology at all. They are more about communing with the land and living for subsistence and not taking too much and not poisoning or doing terrible things to stuff. Oh, that could be a problem. Well, what? really? Well, Why is that a problem? Well, no, just I am technology to some extent. So he, you, he is made of technology. So, so I mean, are we talking like they reject technology, like he's Amish? Yes, like, the, the killers, basically. Yeah, they, they, they do not trust technology. They're literally like a agrarian society. They yeah, they, they farm they and they yeah. they yeah they're basically they're effectively like living in the forest off of the forest. And they yeah. farm. They farm to some degree for subsistence, and they hunt, but they never take more than they 
can give back. Okay. So Aristil is typically uh, pictured as um, either an old human with a bow and gear of a trapper or as an elk-headed humanoid. Ah, Lord of the Hunt. He is often show, uh, they, they often show old Deadeye, which is one of his names, holding fast against various beasts and animals of the wild. So basically, him and Lamash 2 are best buds, I'm sure. Lamash 2. I mean, I think he kills Lamash, Lamash 2's <laughs> things quite a lot. Yes, quite a bit, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. So nothing directly against undead and whatnot, but... Uh... No, not really. So Aristil essentially, uh, well, other than the fact that he's actually lawful good as a deity, and generally lawful good people would generally uh, frown upon the undead quite strongly, um, no, nothing really uh, totally against it, other than that it's unnatural to the laws of nature, which right. is the foundational belief of his religion. So we just have to explain Lane to anybody we run across that this is Drake's penance for the horrible life she led when she was alive. I mean, that might be a tack to take, but they're not going to be happy with an undead giant wandering into, into their town. Oh, and I don't actually have any good spells for disguising undead, especially not long term. <laughs> Just put a sheet over and tell that's, that's where we can do some survival checks and pull the camouflage net over and well, I mean, if we've got find a cave or something, uh, dregs will stand still for eternity if I sell it. Forever. Stay there. <laughs> okay. It's pretty um, cool. I would yeah. also like to, at some point during this time, have a talk with uh, Conier Bane and the two clerics of. Sure. Yeah, we had a message to give to uh, uh, the one cleric of Bry too. From uh, well, but we brought the one cleric of Bry with back with us, so they're she did come, didn't she? Okay. Yeah, so message delivered. And by a the cute half elf. All right, and I, I'm basically gathering information for. Alexander as well, kind of like the learned people in town who might have uh, like history of the area, like ancient books like that, kind of like he was saying about some of the Silver Mount and those kinds of rumors, trying to get real data on you know, hearsay and rumors, if you will. And again, I'm also going to try to find out like who took over the casino after we disrupted operations. And, you know, is anybody new in town that is poking around in Sandville's old haunts? You know, like I want to see if anyone's asking about them or checking in. It could still be Garmin for all we know. Yeah, you can make me a roll. Uh, knowledge Local will do it, I think. Okay. I love how Knowledge Local adapts to wherever you're at. Well, it's like, all right, it's dealing with the locals in my head. Otherwise, you'd have to have it specific. I think in the original versions of it, the, the older versions, it used to be specific to locations, right? Yeah, you had regional knowledge or something like that. Yeah. So I rolled a 23. Nice. Uh, okay, so you find out that Garmin is still in charge of the gambling den and still has his rope fists. Uh, they have been building up in power over the past few weeks again and are um, as as powerful as they were before you left. Uh, you don't think, you don't hear of anyone specifically uh, trying to take over Sandville's place. It just stands empty. Anybody poking around or had asked about him in town recently? Not that you can find out, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, really, some of the some of the carousing stuff is uh, more in line with uh, Wit's character, but I can definitely support and help, especially with some of the applying people with drinks and things like that. So we'll try to focus on helping Alexander gather some of this information and also at the same time stay out of his way so we don't bother him with uh, all the crafting work he's doing. 
So if you go it. into if you go into Sandville's place, it has been completely ransacked. <gasps> Why? Nobody was here to defend it. Although the doors are still locked, and it looks like nobody's gained access any other way. So. Ooh, yeah. secret tunnels. I think that was us ransacking it, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, possibly, but it's more ransacked. Sure. Extra ransacked, if you will. Yeah, I'll go over it with a fine tooth comb to see if I can find any anything uh, left behind that wasn't there before. Like, maybe get a clue, but I, okay. I kind of not hopeful. You know? Okay, roll a perception check. Is that something you could take 20 on? Or to kind of just... I mean, I could say yes, but then you'd know there was no chance of failure, so I'm going to say no. Okay. 16? Yeah, you don't find anything particularly that wasn't... You don't remember being here before. Sure. So uh, you look around. I mean, you didn't spend a great deal of time in here. You did kind of pick through it for the good bits, but... Ultimately, when it comes down to it, it looks like somebody really ransacked this place. They took a long time going through everything. They've opened every box. They've opened every barrel. They've looked inside everything, dug to the bottom of the contents of everything. You've no idea if they've taken anything, but they, they definitely searched this place extensively. You would suspect it probably took them the best part of half a day or more to do it to this level. I, well... If Tatia would want would be a little bit curious about what our friends were after. Man, no way to tell. I mean, uh, is there a way to uh, investigate the room or do uh, a perception check to see if there's anything out of the ordinary that we notice that maybe there's a pattern to things that are missing in the room? I just tried and failed. So Bill looked around and found nothing particular he noticed that was out of place. It just looks like somebody's been very meticulous about searching everything. It's not even particularly messy. When we say ransack, they've left boxes open, but they've actually been quite neat and considered about it. So probably someone that knew what they were looking for and was looking for it. I mean, maybe, or maybe it was somebody who just didn't want to miss anything, and they were, they've moved everything as well, like, like they were looking under everything that was on the ground. Sure. Yes, so, you know, black lights and stuff. Furniture's moved away from the walls. You know, it's, it's like they were really searching for something, just making sure everything was, was, was investigated. What you eating, Wit? Oh, quiche. How is it? It's delicious. Uh, well done. Thanks. Um, so, um, I don't know. Let's start cleaning it up. You tidying up Sambles' place? Yeah, let's, let's clean it up. So it smells pretty bad in here. There were some food stuff stored here, and it's been a while since anyone was been in here. And some of that crap has rotted away while you've been away. There's like a sweet, rotten smell in the air. Oh, gross. All right, well, we're going to start throwing that shit out. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can have uh, a prestidigitation, yeah, prestidigitation <laughs> uh, spell to clean some of this, too, to get it real nice and scrubbed. Right. But, uh, yeah, so that, that sounds like a good task for us to work on, too. Try to maybe see if there was something that they did find, like a... Uh, Trap door or a hidden bit bottom to somewhere. Don't you open that trap, trap door. door. <laughs> I mean, that came out yesterday as well. How very strange. Yeah. How very strange. I missed the reference. What happened? What came out yesterday? Oh, uh, this. This did. Hang on. Copy, close, close, post to stream yet again for the second night running this. What is it? What is it? It's a link. You guys got the best shows for. I know we do. We're very meticulous about children's television. What can we say? And then we released the Teletubbies, and our reputation was shot to shit. But Children of the Stones kind of made up for that. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. Children of the Stones was good. I saw it. It's good. 
And somebody else we must make with watch. Maybe Isaac will like it. Oh, it's watching Crapto. <laughs> with no headphones. Are you missing are you missing the wonderful sound? I turned it down. Ah, very good. I mean it's pretty great. It's pretty great. It's a TV show from when I was a kid. Look at the face. It's pretty the, great. The, the, the intro reminds me a lot of uh, Count Duckula from Nickelodeon. Yeah, oh, Count, so Count Duckula was funny, too. Count Duckula was pretty good. <laughs> wow, that's real. My, my favorite cartoon character concept was that Van Helsing character, who actually created a... He thought he was creating an invisibility ray, but it was actually a disintegration gun, and he disintegrated his companion Heinrich, but the whole that's series, he thought he, he thought Heinrich was with him and just invisible, and that's so we funny. kept talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome. It's like, Heinrich, go get, oh, never mind, I'll get it, and he would go over and pick something up. It was like, that's Heinrich's funny. not going to get it for you. Heinrich that's disintegrated. Funny. All right, so uh, you search Tanville's place, you tidy it up, you've got plenty of time, there's plenty of days left. So about 10 to 15 days, 10 to 12 days into your stay in Torch, um, a, a older gentleman with a, with a queue and a shaven head approaches Tatya. Oh. With a queue? Mm-hmm. Like John mean? Delancey? What? Like a long top knot on the back of his head. Oh. Plenty jail believe- in isolation. I believe it's called a queue, is it not? Is that what it's called? How, I, how would they be approaching Tatia? Uh, they, they are approaching you in the street. It's okay. So uh, walking up to me casually, what am I doing? Am I just hanging out? Was I walking? What was I doing? I don't know. What were you doing? Do you tell I- me. Um, okay, sure. well, uh, I, I'm walking about minding my own business. I, Tatia is looking for um, things to play with with her cat. <laughs> you're you're is, looking, which, you're looking to play with your cat. Now. <laughs> She's looking around for things to engage her cat. <laughs> yes, I'm correct. It is called a cue. Okay. Basically, it's the front part of his head shaven. And then the back part is hair and the long ponytail. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. Like the old martial arts movies. So are yes. they walking up to Tatia, like, hand extended, like, ready to greet me? Or is it just somebody's obviously walking up to me? So uh, they have caught my attention, and I am making eye contact. Look, he's a monk. It's quivering palm. Kill they him. are specifically walking towards you. It's obvious they're going to engage you in a conversation. All right. Well, then I make eye contact in... Uh, Okay. Wait for them to say something. He's wearing um, like a long over jacket of some kind of leather and quite flamboyant clothes, uh, loose trousers, soft shoes, and a very nice looking rapier hangs at his side. It's okay. Mm, greetings, mistress. I have found you at last, I think. And, and, and who do you think I am? You are Mistress Tatia of Desner, I understand. Then, then yes, you have found me. How can I help you? My, my name is Silas, and I am here to offer my services to you, Mistress Tatia of Desner. I, too, am in service of Desner, and until recently was associated with the traveling band north of here towards the world wound. Did you just fall over? <laughs> The fuck just happened? Sorry, it's my dog. What the fuck, dude? She... Your whole computer she... just fell backwards. <laughs> Mr. Camera. Can't... That's why we can't have nice things. No, I have the, because I'm lazy. I'm in my living room. I don't have this set up to a screen yet. It's Because it's... I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I could buy the, the stupid monitor for this computer. I just haven't. <laughs> so, uh, 
I've got my webcam set up on top of a thing of books. Oh, the dog gotcha. walks past. Oh, it. and you're feeding. That's why you're looking off to the side. It's feeding your television. Yeah, my TV. I uh, gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> Yes. That's funny. Technically, I have a large TV there, and I have my main monitor. My monitor for my laptop is there. I'm running two computers at the same time, so that's why I look this way. But my webcam is there. I could do that too, so that way I could like be on my laptop and look at all of this. But right, and now now you can see my shiny lights that I stole from Leah. Oh, I did. I noticed that those used to be in the kitchen at the old place. They did used to be in the kitchen, and they've been in a box since we moved here. And I'm like, I'm having those put behind me because they're cool. They are, they cool. are they very, very cool. cool. Man, your book collection is so impressive, sir. Thanks. I can also, uh, I can also, I think, eventually control them with my stream deck. Once I get it connected together, I'll be able to change the colors of that thing. Nice. nice. Which is cool. All right. Sorry. So, so, madam, I'm here to offer my services. We were traveling with uh, a band of Desnans through the world wound, and unfortunately, we were waylaid. And uh, myself and my companions are the only ones that are left. Ah, I well, I, I am pleasure to meet you. Can y'all hear my dog? Yeah, we totally can hear your dog. Look at her. Look at that face. Stop biting the table, crazy dog. Did you hear? Did you hear that? Where tell your mom to you buy you a chew or a dog treat or something. It stops you chewing on all the shit. Do you want to know how many bones she already has? Yeah. But she's just like a human child. You can get them all the toys, and they're always going to want what they don't have. <laughs> Children can have the most expensive, amazing toys, but they still get more satisfaction out of ripping a hole in your sofa. Also, some yeah. adults. So, puppies! For those, for those on audio, this is, looks like a miniature white-furred version of the wolf and never-ending story. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? It looks, it looks like a Westie is what it looks like. <laughs> Gamork. It's a Westie, right? Yeah. It's a Westie! Yes, it Jeff is a Westie! It's a Westie! I'm a West. Graduation notice for when I graduate. Oh, that's good. J Jim's closer. Not Jim is close to graduating from law school. Swidge, how close are you? Waiting to see how long Swidge has to graduate law school. Woo! And then it come and sue us all. Yeah. Right. No, you oh. don't sue the poor. Oh, yeah, that's true. All those tips for they mentioned for the, the never ending story and. Same oh wow! The song. That's pretty cool. Which is last semester of law school. That's pretty great. So at the end of that graduation ceremony, they basically like sign their soul over to the devil or something, right? The, oh, I don't know. They still have one by that point. Exactly. I guess it depends on what kind of law you're into, whether you have a soul or not, right? Yeah, true story. Oh, time for Coco Guava. <laughs> He's right. What would he have to collect? I mean, I have some game books and. Um, about all, honestly. A uh, large debt on a house. Uh, <laughs> bird law. He's, he's doing bird law, apparently, according to chat. What is bird law? Law of the birds. For real? Yeah, it's what lets them fly. Like aviation? Sure. The law Water. of physics. <laughs> Those neat, you like my neat lights? He likes my neat lights. I like my neat lights too. They're nano leafs. You can get them now in really different shapes. You get square ones and like funny shaped hexagonal ones. And they all kind of fit together. How many lights do you see? There are four lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. All right. So, uh, yes, uh, we would like to offer our services to you. Uh, we hear of your exploits in Scrap Wall, and uh, the goddess gave us a vision to come and find you and see if you would require our services, but you seem to have walked away. <laughs> it is her way. I can hear you, I promise. I'm just also dealing with a dog. Uh, Evan is here, but he is writing notes. Notes? Um, like, like on patients. Uh, oh, like, like he has a patient and he's like tattooing notes on them. Yes, yes, that's, that's exactly what he does. B flat is my favorite. 
Yes. He's the kind, that kind of horror doctor, right? Yes, yes. He, uh, my husband is a horror doctor. Horror doctor. He just horror he brings, do death every doctor. day. Every day he brings the last patient home to write all of his patient notes on them. I do call him a blood wizard. Blood wizard. Well, because so, he has to do uh, blood cancers. Ah, pretty good. So, so madam, um, would you um, ascend to our services? Mute. Wait, this is a conversation with your character. This is your time to shine. <laughs> they go, this is your new companion. Say it again. Would you assent to us serving you, madam? We would. Uh, 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 yes, please. Absolutely. We would love your company. I mean, uh, my companions are really more the kind that would potentially look after a dwelling or your interests here in town, but I would be happy to accompany you, of course. Oh, well, I, I appreciate that you uh, take me so literally. Uh, however, oh, what I mean is I appreciate having your company now. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, I would like to discuss with my friends how maybe we could utilize your services, but uh, th this would be very useful to us. I, I can deal with my companions. I am very good at organizing things, madam. Just to... Let me know where you're staying and what you need, and I will deal with everything you may need. Anything at all. If you need to find something, I can find it. Go somewhere, I can arrange it, have something transported, have a place kept and cleaned, a business run. That kind of thing is what I am good at, madam. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, well, currently we are staying here in town, but we are making uh, a plans to... Uh, okay do otherwise and make some arrangements so again uh, would you like to follow me i'm going to take it to meet to, uh, some other friends of mine of course madam we've heard about your uh, companions also uh, i'd be interested to meet them i'm sorry to hear about your giant companion word travels fast but uh, i hear he was liquefied doing something in scrap wall how how truly ghastly uh yes it was, thank you, uh, we appreciate this sentiment. One hopes not to be liquefied in your company, madam. Ah, well, I'll uh, do my best to make sure that it doesn't happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> I would I greatly can, appreciate that. I would want to be that, liquefied uh, myself. <laughs> that's would, and, would that's extra. <laughs> greatly appreciate it, madam. Are you taking them to the tavern where we're hanging out or to yeah, Sandville's so, uh, business? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and make our way on over there to you where y'all are hanging out. You get to meet the gang now. Uh, so we make our way on over to the tavern. Okay, he follows you in. He he dusts off a chair and pulls it out for you. All right, so I do... I Who do I see first? Alexander or I, do I see Kiernan? I don't know. They, I mean, Alexander's probably done and hanging out in the bar, awkwardly asking questions of people, and Kanan's probably trying to look sneaky in a corner. And Bully Gup is probably stuck to something, drinking heavily. <laughs> okay, I. so then I would walk up to Alexander first, because uh, Tati would, or sorry, Tati would walk up to Alexander I uh, thinking that they may be of service most to the things that maybe he is working on because he's doing projects while we are in town. Is that correct? Alexander yes. is doing projects in town. So, all right. So I guess I'll walk up to him and be like, Alexander, hello. Hello, Tatcha. Hey, I've, I've got some people that I would like you to meet. Uh, this is Silas. And does Silas have the his the Fellows, fellowship. He, he does not, uh, madam. They, they, are, they, they, are, they are at a camp outside of town, madam. I would never propose to approach you in such a large group until you had agreed to our services. Okay. That's what fireballs for. Exactly, sir. I never want to make anyone uncomfortable, especially of uh, madam's reputation. Oh, and what might my, uh, my, my reputation be? <laughs> I mean, I hear stories of you freeing the people of Scrapwall from terrible servitude at the hands of a, a mechanical monster, madam. Oh, phew. At least it's all good, then. <laughs> uh, 
right. So, Alexander, uh, I was wondering, is there anything that we might be, uh, that they might be able to help you out with while I, uh, while you're working on things here for pieces of uh, updating our equipment or uh, running errands about town for you? And is there anything you might need? Sir, yeah. sir, I would be very happy to assist you in a plan of attack for anything you may have a project running on. I am very good at organizing things and could potentially shave time off your work. Ah, that would be most welcome. I am currently enchanting several objects for the party and myself. Um, I'm also attempting to acquire so, several new spells. Um, I'd be interested in acquiring a new nanite canister if those were available. Um, I'm sure I can source something like that, sir. If you just give me a list, I'll help you find something. Excellent. Most useful. Uh, Foolish mortals. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate that, sir. Yes, uh, I see that you're one of those uh, those androids. Uh, it's interesting, interesting indeed. What what gave him away the 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 appearance, the awkwardness, or the foolish mortals comment? <laughs> you, you, sir, are some kind of planar creature. I feel, uh, uh, yes, something from the realm of shadow. I suspect. Nice to meet you. My name is Silas. Nice to see you, Silas. I'm here to serve my mistress, uh, Madame Tatia. Yeah, I'm, I'm right. basically, I, I want to be cordial, but I'm uh, actually a little, uh, I mean, obviously I know I'm hand-waving this as, like a, a, as an NPC, but I'm still kind of initially skeptical and spooked that this guy seems to know so much about us. And so I'm not necessarily trusting them. So I'm going to basically try to find holes in their pattern of Desna worship and just try to see if they just do lip service or they actually do do worship of, with Desna because I've seen Tatia do it enough where I'm, I think I can discern the real thing. I am, we have religion as a that's, soul too. So. There's, there's a cat paw just appeared under my door. Because her <laughs> observance is pure, I'm sure. Exactly. So how long have you been an agent of the Technic League? I'm afraid I am not an agent of the Technic League. I, I am, however, uh, averse with technologies of all kinds. I have lived here quite a while. Uh, we were traveling through this area and unfortunately headed a little close to the world wound and got involved in a scuffle up there. And myself and my companions are all that is left of our merry band. So you're the wise ones? No, we are the lucky ones, sir. Ah. Almost as good. Well, I'll take it, but being eaten by demons is not a good way to, for one's uh, master to go. No, that almost happened to me once. <laughs> Boy, yeah, they're disagreeable. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, I, I did not find it very pleasant to watch. Uh, there wasn't a lot we could do, honestly. He was, he was dead in moments, which is a bit of a shame, considering. <sighs> Damn. Dude, do you need, like, some time to, to mourn? Oh, no. No, madam. I'm, I'm here to serve. All right. Well, would you like a drink, then? No, madam. I do not uh, sully myself with such things. Okay, oh, then. Suspicion uh, number one right there. I, I guess uh, what would make you happiest right now? Would you like to get right to work, then, my good friend? I am happy just to be here, madam, and uh, be part of your company. Whatever I can do for you, I am here to do, and I will introduce my fellows shortly at your leisure. Okay, sounds great. Well, uh, I'd like, uh, Alexander, do you want to meet the group? Sure, I have time. All right, I or do you want to stay here in the bar? I figure if you want to come with me and then you can see who might uh, be able to help you out right now, you can get to know. I, I will go and fetch them, madam, if you'd like to stay here. They're not far from here. That'd be great. Give me time to get another treat. Do you... he, he leaves the bar. He, he, okay, bye. He, he walks with confidence out of the bar. Um, after maybe 20 minutes, he returns with five companions. He has... Two halflings, a half orc, a dwarf, and a human child. All meatbags. 
All meat bags, I'm afraid. Oh. A child? A human yes. child, huh? Why? Ah, oh, mistress, hello, how are you? Um, it's good to see you again. These are my companions, all that is left of our happy Desnan troop. I, I don't mean to be cruel, but uh, one of you is a small child. Yes, uh, that, that is that is prawn. Prawn. A shrimp. Prawn, yes. Prawn. I, I don't, and, and prawn, are you going to require a nanny? Oh, no, he's not that small. He's quite self-sufficient, actually. You can give him tasks. He will run errands for you and clean things and carry things and dash messages. That is his thing. He is quite fast, is Prawn. So Prawn will be able to send messages for me. He is also uh, something of a, shall we say, uh, rather discreet. Not many people give a second glance to children. And uh, my old master used to use him for gathering information from time to time. Oh, everybody well. drinks. Ah, cheers. 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 Jim drink. Well, Prawn. <laughs> prawn is like there to, to try. Into trouble. Prawn is there to try on strange masks. Yes, if you was here, I let's make one. <laughs> Get the gimp. I almost made a mask. Prawn, oh yeah. In trouble. Miss Mistress, I, I don't, Mistress, but I'll be good. I promise. Oh well, that's a shame because sometimes I'm going to want you to be a little bit mischievous. I mean, I'll do what you ask me, mistress, but, you know, Desna says that we shouldn't do too many bad things. Well, yes, but if it's for something good. Yeah, of course, then that's different, mistress. Okay, good boy. All right, Bron. The All right, so, of uh, is it's always up for interpretation, really. So, I... Mean. I how you so I've got prawn the messenger child there's two halflings a half orc and a dwarf and then a half orc half dwarf there's just a full dwarf just not half a dwarf there's just a half orc then a half orc yes left half or right half okay so uh, forgive middle half you, what Okay. Okay. Yes. M ah! Mistress, uh, this 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 is Burdolin. He is an armorer of some skill. The, he, sorry. he he indicates the dwarf. Okay. So there is okay a dwarf. Yes, his name is Burdolin. I'm so sorry. Uh, don't bird, don't bird, be bird, sorry. Bird is the word. Someone drinks, not Jumadis. I nominate Wit. <laughs> drinks. Quite oh, a, yeah. quite a list what, of companions. Uh, which, which lips are right, moving? I'm look so concerned. sorry about this. I'm, I'm probably going to... I'm kind of thinking that I should just change over my laptop and go hide somewhere. Really? There are so many noises happening in my living room right now. It's pretty noisy. It's that okay, Evan. So, it's just because it's he's trying to pin that patient down so he can make his notes on them. That's exactly what it is. I just feel bad because this here. is a time when I really need I'm to... I've got a weird pixelated overlay. Can we do like a, um, actually, I think, I think maybe I shouldn't be on this television in here. I think maybe it would just be easier to shut out the animals and everything if I went back to the laptop. Go get it, Wiz. Go get it. Let's do that next time. Don't worry about it right now. Touch your heads to the bar for, for two minutes. You think so? I mean, it's up to you, dude, wherever you're comfortable. I'm comfortable here. I just also kind of feel like I'm being a pain in the ass with all the noise. So I guess I'm not comfortable. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to fix this real quick. Let's do like a five minute timeout. Tatia goes to the bar. All right. Sounds good. Tatia goes to the bar. There is an arrangement of people standing around looking at you. 
I, I could always talk with um, Conier and the clerics of Bry if uh, the chance presents itself. That's weird. Yeah, it is. Isn't it though? Because it's fine and then it pixelates. Why is it, it pixelating? It's like it's focusing on something in the intermittent depth of focus that's like th like through my face. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering if it's because you are not moving and those lights are oscillating behind you, if it's trying to focus on those like, as like, the cocoa face, you know? I've movement. noticed that on Zoom, if people are too stationary and their skin tones are too even, that sometimes it starts to edit them out as background. Mm, that's weird. No, it's like doing some... I think this is a Skype thing. I've seen this happen to um, Alec on um, Hexad before. Mm. He'll he'll start to go sepia for no reason. It's almost like it's having a little extra processing issue or something there. Oh, yeah. I wonder if it's... Uh, I wonder if it's a that Rowdy Rowdy Piper movie shelter. They live? You know? They live. Oh, yeah. no. The glasses. Yeah. Hell, the glasses. Hell, comes, hell comes to Frogtown. <laughs> This is your god. Put on the glasses. It's the dance of the three snakes. <laughs> Shit, that's a movie I haven't seen in a while and probably never want to think about again. <laughs> a fertile man. That's right, the best kind. <laughs> so what? what is the... So Conor Bane and his daughter... Val. Val. Hmm? Now, well, Val was small. Val's like young or something, or she's not old. I, th I, th I thought she was like teenager or something. In, yeah, in, she's like uh, late young. teens. Although I'm mostly basing that off the picture of her that uh, from the first yeah. book. I think she's a Kellid, though, right? She's a Kellid that he adopted. Yes, I think I believe that's matches my recommendation her recollection i don't know if we ever learned she was adopted but i assumed because she was kellid and he was i knew she was adopted i didn't know she was kellid though yeah she's a kellid oh with a better uh attitude toward technology right i mean everybody can influence. learn right it's all about it's all about your uh upbringing i think i i only socially Flubbed with her once or twice. Flubbed. Meat bags. Meat bags. If I could read your father's spell books, it might help find him. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Let me let me look up the spells so I can find your father. Tell me the spells. Cute. Like wait, wait, you, I'm, you said that your childhood rec recollection is that he lost an arm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I oh, just so happen to know of some Kellids and one of them lost an arm. Your, your father lost an arm. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to put Bill back in his box. Uh oh, because oh, we're down to two people. I don't think it actually matters anymore. I, uh, NDI seems pretty good. Hmm. I just, Bill seems to be occasionally wobbling oh, yeah, his size like a, a wee bit. Box and a third. Yeah, so I, I've pulled him in now. I'm not moving. No, no, it's not that. It's the it's something to do with how Skype um, interfaces with the resolution of your camera. So sometimes when and it's oh apparently everybody oh somebody drinks acid honey. <laughs> Ooh, I think Swidge is trying to get Bree drunk. A noble profession. Uh, <laughs> I love you, Bree. Do you have any questions for uh, Silas at all? Well, we're waiting for Wit to come back on. Well, like, what what um, major domo tasks would we want him to do in this town? Kind of like, I don't know. I don't know, sir. Whatever my mistress would require, but I am capable of looking after a household, especially with these fine fellows here to help and we can do many other tasks personally i would like to accompany my mistress as i did with my old master and then i can help you while you're on the road so to speak you mentioned you had some familiarity with technology yes i am a little uh, a dabbler in the um, arts of the technological uh, realm So, I, I, I can identify things, and I am able to use many technological devices. My master had an interest. 
So not repairing their reconditioning technology or... I am able to do some of that, but not a great deal. More in the realm of theory than practice, shall we say. Many are these days, apparently. But I could use I could use a gun, for example. Oh, that wouldn't be difficult. Uh, one of those, for example, he points at the EMP pistol. Uh, that would be no challenge at all for me. He pulls out a long-stemmed pipe and starts to fill it. I see the halfling. Your love of the halfling leaf has clearly affected your judgment. No, I don't (laughs) trust anything like that, sir. I just find it relaxes me. And it has been a stressful trip here. On the world wound, I'd imagine so. Many dangers and... Yes, we've seen many things. Uh, It has not been... Uh, Some places are just not what they say in the books, are they? Yes, books get outdated. Well, yes, they're it's like most of them are written by meatbags that are fairly unreliable. Yes, I agree with that too. There are many books that are uh, not worth the paper they're written on, unfortunately. I I do dabble a little in knowledge of all kinds. I have interest in knowing things, and languages is a bit of a a pet following of mine. Ah. That is most admirable, I will say, in Androfan. And he replies, yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, Though this language is difficult to uh, articulate one's desires fluently, as we only know a little of what they actually used to sound like. Most of that comes from computer-generated sources. So who knows how really the true inflection was. Interesting. Yes, he speaks Androfan. I marked a couple gold off of my character sheet because so I'm going to buy a, a long stem pipe and some tobacco too. <laughs> buy a long stem pipe and some tobacco. Okay, sure. sounds good. That's pretty sweet. He has a long stem pipe and some. Sounds, like, try, a, so, sounds like a totally new out. habit I've never heard of before, so I'll do it. I'm going to try. I've never tried smoking. Let's give that a try. That's sure. fun. Um, any kind of leaf you just happen to find on the road, you can put in this thing. You just oh, no, soak no, it with luminary no. fluids first. And... I'll, I'll, I'll recommend some for you. Oh, touch is back. I think, I made, <laughs> I, think I made my saves on that numeric. Oh no! What? <laughs> what? It's on together mode. <laughs> what have you done? You can I turn it off. It's okay. It's not affecting me right now, so okay. I'm good. Okay. Because I'm gonna try to change it back to something normal. Okay, for just review. fucking together mode. <laughs> you should be able to just disable out of the call, but they. You would they think failed. so, right? Well, they they want everybody to like hug each other in the auditorium or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. But it's so creepy. It's just terrible. It's like, weird, right? Like flick each other's heads and but stuff. But it's not even an auditorium, is it? It looks like a jungle. Yeah, well, I mean, why would you want to be in, like, a normal room when you could be in, like, an amphitheater in, like, Peru? <laughs> I yeah, think you can assign different backgrounds. Yeah, when your chest protruding out of the yeah. steps of a Mayan temple. <laughs> I, I think you can choose backgrounds for that, but I've never been able to stand being in it long enough to really find out. No, oh, I think you can change the backgrounds, because I've just seen the wear, Just wear sun god robes and have a bunch of naked women throwing little pickles at you. Feels you. Am I the only one that has a dream? <laughs> Oh Jeez. my goodness! Oh. Okay, so, okay, so the, where were we? I'm so sorry. The, the boys taking... are talking to Silas about his abilities, and they found out that he's a he's able to use technology fairly well. It's an interest of his, and he also is very good with linguistics, and he's generally knowledgeable about stuff. Yeah, so we're talking in a language you don't understand. Smoking a pipe that you never saw smoke before, drinking drinks without you, so that he's basically our follower now. Just saying. Yeah, oh. it's true. He did pull out. He did pull out a pipe and start smoking it. To the point okay. that to the point that Bill went and bought one so he could try two. <laughs> I wants to be cool too. Yeah, and then he's like, Oh, you just basically take any leaf you find on the road and put it in this and smoke it. So well, he's gonna try all wants sorts to of one up everyone. So she walks up and she goes, Ah, okay. Well, uh I uh what is everybody drinking? It looks like you all got the same thing. Water? Probably mead. 
meat. Yes, I, I, I will stick to water or fruit juice, madam, if okay. that's okay. It is good to keep one's mind sharp when one is looking after another. One's ah. duties are important. It's okay. All right. Well, then I guess I'll just drink alone like a sad alcoholic. Boy, alone? I'm drinking. Madam, I'll drink with you. Like ale I for said, me. I'll drink. Oh, who are you? If you're buying, I'll take an ale. Hell yeah. It's all that, right. The, the, half right here. The, two, the two halflings also put in an order. All right. The, 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 the halflings. The half they come in points. <laughs> the, the half orc just seems very, very vaguely far away and just distant. So, what do we call our orc friend? Ah, oh, madam, we call him Simonette. Simonette. I like it. I'm going to call you. Does he look like he has PTSD or he's like traumatized? No, no, he's, he's on a different plane to many of us here. He is a, a dreamer. He's far away, but he is amazing at organizing books and papers. He's uh, somewhat of a, a prodigy, shall we say it. Uh, he wants my master's librarian. Oh, oh, does, he, does he hail from Skyrim? I know not where that is. <laughs> cool. But he is uh, he was a, a, a tribal dreamer. They say he was the son of a shaman. But he is uh, he is without speech, I am afraid, mistress. But there is some rudimentary hand signals if you need to speak to him I can pass along a message, but put him in a room filled with books and papers and he will organize them in double quick time for you. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Well, shall we rest or shall we move? What do we have to do? I, I have to introduce you to the two halflings, of course, madam. Ah, well, I figured we would be doing that. Aren't we? We are having our drink now. This is the famed guard and defender of one of, of our troop, Armand Rumblebelly. Armand Rumblebelly. Oh, that's so cute. Pleased place to meet you, madam. I am here, and I will defend your property and yourself to the best of my abilities. Well, um, thank you very much, Mr. Bottom. That's Rumble Belly, madam. Rumble Belly. I mean, Mr. Belly. No, just Rumble Belly, madam. That's my full full last name. Belly. Just call Rumble me Ar Belly. Just call me Armand, madam. You, Armand. Armand. Non-bond. RB. There we go. I have a feeling our friend is a little testy about his name. As, as, as all halflings are to some degree, madam. It's a, <laughs> a long tradition of people talking down to them, I think, that uh, gets them a little uh, uppity about their extra long names. And thinking oh. of extra long names, this fine woman here, <sighs> Torn from her homeland is Willacher Featherbottom. Featherbottom. Hey, Bullycup, I think these might be Kender, and one Why of them might be a I vampire. Have, like off script <laughs> reactions. I just want to have my own personal non tatier reaction to names like Featherbottom. I mean, you can have a name for Featherbottom. Do you have the old tear appearing by your head? But I'm pleased. Yeah. And these things are so cute. They're so very Harry Potter. And it's a, <laughs> like... <laughs> and they have a glowing orange exclamation point over their head. So clearly they have a side quest ready for you. So kind, of, kind of better better <laughs> beer for everyone now. They're, they're drinking um, and quiet. Oh, madam, madam, I, I'm happy to cook for you. Happy, happy indeed to cook for someone. Oh, these wastrels are happy with anything, but I'm sure you're a better sort. I don't need to eat anymore. But I, I could I could tantalize your palate, even your digital palate, sir. Great. Oh, I, I, Kieran completely peeks up because he's all about like food and excess. So he's like, oh, like what? What's your specialty? He's, like, I really immediately excited. imagine that scene from the Jetsons where I uh, what is her name? Ruby the robot? What what's the robot's name? Wasn't it yes. Ruby? Oops, Rosie, yeah. Rosie, Rosie, that was her name. Rosie, the Our robot which she makes food and it pops out of her tummy and it's in like a little stick that just looks like butter. Do you remember that? 
is horrifying. Oh my god, <laughs> it used to gross me out so much. The Suck. finest varieties of haggis you've ever seen. Suck on the goo good. I was like, if you're going to make food of the future and make it that compact, at least make it look like something tiny and adorable. Like you know, a baby Jetsons, muffin. Like, like, who like, doesn't love Jetsons tiny took, muffins? The Jetsons took place in 1999. Yeah, yeah that's true. We have compassed like there the setting, at that point. You know? well, I mean, I guess... I guess back then, sticks of butter was a big dramatic thing, right? Oh my goodness! Well, like the stick Jetsons of took place in 1999. Yeah, yes. like all that shit was supposed to be by 1999. Bullshit! In the That's clouds, not true. Flying cars. No, I don't remember them mentioning years in that show. Did they really? Bill's googling. Oh my goodness! So I remember I, I totally heard that before. Oh, they, they never specified the year. However, there is 1999, 20. 32 and 2062 it looks like is the definitive time it was supposed to have taken place i mean we're still not going to get flying cars by 2062 i mean it would be really not intentionally cool. flying and we that could, yeah, right we could, not basketball they played what was it called sprocket ball or something anyway you spent far longer watching the jetsons than anyone else in this room ah uh, because it was a fun show right sure was it not good? I don't remember. Did I just think it was good because I was yeah. a kid? I mean, okay. I mean, there's anyway, a, there's so a, now okay, we're let, in let, a me bar. Let, let me tell you something about experience, right? Right. Okay. I don't think like that. Because if you think about it being good because you were a kid, you'll go back and watch it and you'll think it's a total piece of shit and then your whole childhood is ruined. So I'm don't like think that. Barbarian, which holds up. Yeah, like 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 Knight Rider with uh, Michael Hasselhoff. It was like that was a great show when I was a kid. But, you go back now and it's like you want to put a bullet in your head. But but but, but, but Knight show. Rider Knight Rider was significantly better than Airwolf. Uh, That's also I don't true. Even know you never my watch Airwolf show. ever again. Don't watch <laughs> it now. It has aged really badly. It, it's aged, but Jan Michael Vincent is still cool. So I mean, okay, that's cool. But that is the rest of the show, which is fifty percent the same cutscene of a helicopter shooting something. Well, it's like the original Battlestar Galactica. The um, Vipers launching was one of the most spe expensive special effects they did for the pilot, so they just reused that clip over and over, over as many times every, as they could. At least, at least once every episode. To, to the point when any ship would launch, you would see it go three times from different perspective down That's the little right. launch tubes. Because it was so expensive the first time they did it. That's so hilarious. <laughs> We're going to get our money's worth. Like, <laughs> it cost us $200 million. We're going to do it 200 million times. <laughs> I never hated the original Battlestar Galactica. I hated that dog man in a suit. It was kind of creepy. I've Not that never seen it, so I'm going to have to oh. Google an image of this. Oh, uh, Moffat, was it? Muffet? Yeah, Moffat. He was a daggett. It was a daggett. That's why I remember that. Yes. I also remember it was creepy to leave your child with an, uh, what was clearly some kind of pedophile in a costume. Muffet, well, and you the also Battlestar had, um, Galactica chimp? He's not you a chimp. You had, um, uh, not, not we, Hooker, a social leader. A what? A social leader. A so it was, yeah, okay. And then uh, there was like... Sorry. It's, yes, it's like a costume for someone to get close to your children. So there was a Muppet chimpan Muppet. God damn it. The name is like Muppet. Muffet. There was a yeah. Muffet 2 was played by a chimpanzee named blah blah blah. So yeah. I guess at some point I I don't know. Well, that's if that when you get into Galactica in 1984, new... which was a, a spin-off where they had flying motorcycles that turned invisible. So oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that whole that's whole when they crossing. actually got to Earth, wasn't it? With yeah. the flying motorcycles that got invisible. And, and you found that my microwaves could could uh, shut Shylons down and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that. And it was like it got shot and blown up by is, the Is that the bit where they, they did that whole piloty long like like episode where they got to Earth mm -hmm. and then there was the spin off series that everyone quietly forgot about. Yes, I'm traveling. But I have up on my DVD shot still. So. Oh my god, you have so much cheesy ass science fiction. I wish I owned your cheesy ass science fiction collection. <laughs> Y'all so for real. I found part of a list. Mm. I actually hold on a second. BRB. BRB. Yes. BRB. W H I T. As we see Evan in the background, 
Have it, look, you can, just see, this, you can just see the leg of the screaming patient. <laughs> well, looks like my int increase for my headband also affects all my uh, knowledge skills. And... Yes, nice. Oh, yeah, headband effects. What, what knowledge skill is in your headband, by the way? I lost uh, the list, but I'll, fi I'll find it again. It was I, of the movies I'm supposed to watch. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I, I, yeah. I built it with diplomacy and bluff because those are my weakest skills. Well, no. No, no that's clever. Untrue. My weakest skill is actually sense motive, and that's pretty hopeless. So, but if I ever increase it to a plus six, maybe I'll include sense motive. In Holy it. shit! Is it that bad? Uh, my sense well, motive. He's, he's, is, got a, he's got a net negative, right? Negative five. Yeah, my sense something. motive is a negative five overall. <laughs> what? The I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> which means I'm either going to fall for everything people tell me, or I'm going to be suspicious of everything everybody tells me. And so right now, I suspect everybody's part of the Technic League until. That's hilarious. You suspect oh everybody's God. part of the Technic League. This little thing oh, is the child cutest prone. nightmare. Isn't it, though? It's a very, very terrible oh nightmare. <laughs> it's, it's like I would cry if it was hovering over me at night, but then I would also want to give it a hug. But like... they, when they had to evacuate the 13 <laughs> colonies, they didn't get any daggets on board. They would normally have daggets to uh, guard the camps at night, so they built a prototype robot daggot, which... Of course, they gave to Boxy the human with human child to to uh, teach and raise as an experiment, and they never saw any more of them. Ah. So it's like a a Beta Max, well, what, what, like a, from yeah. uh, Big Hero Six, and it like goes into kill mode, and its eyes go red or something. You can activate it in protection mode. <laughs> <laughs> or battle dag it. I was more of a Buck Rogers. I was a Buck Rogers fan and a Battlestar Galactica fan. So, oh yeah, Princess Ardala. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh goodness, oh. the Tiger Man. watch list. Good job. I'm gonna make it something different. Hang on. <laughs> All right. So, so these companions sound pretty diverse and all that. I'm curious. Yeah. What the, since the uh, half orc can't talk. Um, I'm assuming you wrote down these names, uh, Tati, because I don't know. I don't see them in the. Yeah, I didn't, that. but I know it's going to be in the notes. And I was Armand go Rumblebelly and Wiltshire Featherbottom. Cool. I'm curious about the uh, abilities of this uh, Dream Seer or whatever he is. It sounds kind of interesting to me. Perhaps this would be a good opportunity to go into the ruins under torch and actually establish a stronghold there. Oh, yeah, good idea. Well, do we you want to wrap up I our drinks and then show our friends where this area may be and see if it's a place that we can set up? I mean, how do we, do we trust these people? I mean, really, you just, just met them, right? I mean, yeah, we just met secret, them, but they seem secret, pretty trustworthy to me. Is there a secret handshake from Desna, or like what's what's line thirteen of the thirteenth scripture? And if they recite it, then they are a follower of Desna. You know, did you vet them at all, or are you just like you look worthy? Come join our group. <laughs> I mean, I guess technically I could use Moonlit script. Could I, or would I not be able to get information that specific? It's, it, you could ask questions, especially if you're using the um, divination. Part, or even the, you could even use augury to do it. You get yes, no's, or wheel or woe. So it depends on which spell you want to use, but you have to do it while you're sleeping. Okay. Oh, uh, Desna, are those posers or not? And I can, I can, I can sleep with Tatia just to make sure the spell works properly. Uh, I mean, you might get in the way. You might get covered in ink. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> it's, not the, it's, not, it's not the worst thing I've been covered in at night. <laughs> This I knew I should have made that made that helm of telepathy. That would be perfect for uh, reading out technique spies. Oh yeah, but you don't you don't want to get up above my neck here. That that's just no man's land. That's that, that'd be more scary. I think. No, I don't know fear. 
So yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is that, is that I'm just I mean, I'm just role playing, right? Like he's skeptical and not untrustworthy by heart. Like, this, oh, oh. No, I understand, friend. It, I mean, it makes complete sense. But um, the the way that I feel, um, they sound like they know what they're talking about. And I would say we should always keep a watchful eye on literally everybody, even you, friend. But. Uh, <laughs> But we keep an eye on them, and uh, I will see if I could put in a word with the lady upstairs. And then I see if I she gives me the yay or the nay. I like if you the see lady what that upstairs. <laughs> Your extra planar contacts That's do right. appear to have some advantage. It's correct. Yeah, we have uh, Zagmander as an extra planar contact now, too. That'll come in handy. Uh, not that we know how to contact him or her, although she could probably find us pretty easily if she wanted to. They wanted to. Yeah. I probably even mentioned that, that we come from Torch. So, right. madam, what I'm hearing is you're not 100% trusting of us yet, or at least your friends are oh, not. Oh, so, I would uh, have said that in their presence. <laughs> well, I probably would have, but you know. stop you right there. I said that I trust them as much as I trust you and as much as I trust my friend Kieranen over here. Yes, Which, we've heard the stories, madam. Yeah, so this yeah. Also, I don't trust <laughs> you like it's some sort of personal effect. The endless stream of bastard children, the horrifying drug habits. I mean, it is common knowledge over Numeria. He is an untrustworthy <laughs> sort. So anyways, what were you going to say? Me? I'm saying uh, whatever you need us to do, madam. If you have a place for us to go and we can camp out or set up, or I understand you have some kind of store or some kind of place we may set up, or maybe you have another area you would like us to be. How are you with zombies? I am not able to bring them to, to being. I have killed several. What I get we... is the word killed, madam. I don't know if you it's dead already. Rekilled, perhaps. You know what? Uh put put it to an eternal night night. Exactly. Um uh um <laughs> uh, liberated for Desna, madam, I think is where we shall go with that. <laughs> uh, why, sir, do you have a are you interested in this kind of field of study? Not overly so, although I do did get the spell book of a necromancer be slain, so ah, very interesting. Very interesting from a specific point of view, I suppose. It is good to know what one's enemies are capable of and perhaps learn the magic so one may be able to better diffuse it. And and our froggy friend won't let me have robots, so so you're putting together an army of the terrifying undead. Yes, I, I believe that's how the slippery slope starts. Uh, one undead, and then there's two, and then four, and then there's a whole swarm of them eating the villagers. I believe there's a limit to how many undead I can have and control at one point, but so far it's... Yes, again, I believe that's how it starts. Yes, there's, there's a limit. Oh, I will never go only when that. there's Only when there's the immoral compunctions of a of a chaotic necromancer behind the, whose only interest is power alexander is much too smart and clever and and quite honestly pure and devoid of any type of corruption or chaos like that yes that's that's exactly right i'm sure no one would possibly look at this and go oh my goodness what an opportunity i could bring back dead corpses and have them walk around with me and potentially get in the way of deadly things while I do other things over here. I'm certain that's definitely not tempting at all, Master Kiernan. Like, yeah. like farming the fields, yeah. I mean, we could replace oxes everywhere. Yes, yes, I believe that is. Is it necks where that is a thing? Ah, oh, chili oxes yes. as well, I believe. Uh, to some degree, but I think they prefer demons there, don't they? No, devils. Um, get get it right. Yes, that's correct. And people who are unfortunate. <laughs> yes, but I believe it's his necks where they use the undead for menial tasks. Ah, yeah, possibly. 
They got their economy kicking. Thanks. Well, I think you're bringing back the dead. I believe most of the country are actually dead, so I think nobody really minds. <laughs> so, how about that uh, getting to that hideout, yeah? <laughs> where, where, I'm following you, madam, wherever you All want right, to go. right, Alexander, shall we? You notice that they, they kind of guide the half-orc out a little bit. Okay. The dreaming one? Mm-hmm. Tatia makes, Tatia makes a middle to know to make a, a cute bracelet for the orc. Okay, like a friendship <laughs> bracelet. Yes. Does it look like they're leading him along because he's spaced out or that he might be blind? He doesn't appear to be blind. He steps around things quite deftly. Okay. So they just it just doesn't seem to motivate to move. Hmm. All right, so where are we taking them? Oh, I thought I thought we had already talked about that. My bad. <clears throat> well, is, these are these are your we followers. Were to clear out the area where we were, uh, you know, talking about. If I didn't know that we didn't know where we were going, I wouldn't let the bar yet. Are we still in the bar then? I mean, you said you were just leaving the bar. Yeah. So yes, I leaving the bar to go to uh, the area we were going to set up our base, if you will, and so we could get uh, started on that with everyone. So where are we going? Where was that? Underneath, underneath torch, where the yeah, right. So I think that some of the areas that might be um, quarters might need to be cleaned with like press digitization or some kind of well. Anti-fungal spell because I think there's, some of the bunch of pygmies and stuff were in there. Right? There's a large desert chamber where you could just erect some regular buildings in and stuff for now, but mm. okay. Actually, weren't those occupied? I thought those <laughs> uh, with undead Kasatha that we killed and mm. those tentacle things under the sand. I think we got all those. Well, we got two. I think that's all we found. So we're not talking about bringing them into the inner ship. I mean, we could. That's up to group call. I mean, how do y'all feel? How do y'all feel about it? I, I mean, I don't trust them yet, but that's just Kiernan, right? And there's plenty of work to be done in the just the little <clears throat> front door area and stuff. Lots of rubble and stuff. In my opinion, I, yeah, exactly. Why don't we just go back? And if they cause problems, we can deal with it then. Okay. Sure. Let's go. Onward. Do -do -do -do. So are we going? Set the reactor to overload again. We're going underneath <laughs> torch because we're going to go clean shit up. Okay. You're going we'll, impress upon, we'll impress upon them that it's still, you know, the, the scope of what's under here is secret to just about everybody in town so it's kind of on the hush hush all right so then we will do it in a very very sneaky way do i since kiernan since you are better at sneaky sneaky would you like to lead our sneaky little band i mean you've literally got to go down to the side of the pond jump in and swim underneath the water into a secret tunnel yeah Yay! yeah um i could cast water breathing on people if that would help uh we are mostly good at swimming so we have done a little in our time um i guess the entrance is under the water madam tatia would it not be better to have an entrance on the surface we could organize something i'm sure ah that would be very appreciated uh yes so then uh, unless of course the intention is to keep it secret the intention is very much to keep it secret, and uh, but we could also have a a structure uh, in town that has a basement, and we could potentially have a tunnel under that leads down. Well, wow. I mean, we're going to need to bring people in eventually, I would guess. But if if that leads into the outer cabin area, and, and we reset the doors to be more secure on, on the perimeter, that might be good. 
Yeah, so like, yeah, okay, I understand. So I, <clears throat> what do you need in order to make, uh, may, maybe we just go check out the area now, uh, see what our layout looks like down there and then see where we could best set up uh, an alternate entrance. Uh, that would be more advantageous to us. Yeah, it sounds great. I think it'd be better to look at it from the inside and then it can, they have our, I, if they have knowledge of architecture or mining. Is everyone okay? I, I, looked, for to, I, looked, to the, I looked to the dwarf companion. Well, that's racist. What? <laughs> I'm an armor. I don't get to know mining. <laughs> so then, I, everybody ready to go for a swim? Uh, Absolutely. Blah, blah, Prawn blah. looks nervous. Don't worry, and don't mind the and she's with us. Silas takes Prawn and they dive in. All right. They follow you into the water and they swim through the entrance and you all get inside and they are marveled at how, how weird this is. Silas is interested in the technology as they walk. The rest are just like... Yeah, don't touch the electricity walls. <laughs> No, sir, of course not. Silas, what do you think? It is interesting. I've seen similar places as we've traveled around. There are many of these kind of strange buried structures here in Numeria. Yeah? Tell me about it. There are several. I have seen many with my master. Not many are in this good a condition, though. Ah, could you tell us anything about the... Uh, what you see about the markings, or...? It's Androfan. It is the language of whomever these things belonged to. I believe your companions here can speak it, at least our friend here. Ah. Alexander. Yes. Yes. Ah. Perfect. Well, Alexander, uh, so we look... Okay, so GM, we look around the room. What do we see that might uh, be... That Silas and his buddies might be able to help out with? I feel like Alexander is going to be better at delegating those kind of tasks. So, uh, so, so, <clears throat> this place is enormous. If you recall, it has a, basically has an enormous desert in the middle of the ship. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want them to do here? What is your you're, general? You're better off keeping this stuff general than assigning specific tasks. Otherwise, we're going to have en entire games where you micromanage these people. Well, there was some rubble-filled corridors and stuff that could be cleared. And... Yes, uh, I think we could probably arrange something like that. Tidy up is what I'm hearing. And, and I'd also like to have some kind of concealed entrance on the surface that leads to this desert area just before these... Um, glassite doors. Well, you could do them even before the glassite doors that get that's through I mean. the desert. Yeah, that's what I mean. Same thing. But I, I, I want I want an entryway within Torch so we don't have to go through the the, through the, uh, the a dry the a dry entry. Right. Um, I also had the ambition to try to reset the exterior doors to a higher security level so that. It would take more than the most common of cards to open them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Yeah, because we have brown, green, white, and uh, green, brown, white, black. That is Gray, a I very think. good idea. Great, yes. Which one do we want to set it at? Not the highest, but maybe the second highest? Yes, that would be good. Which one is that, Gray? Green was the highest, but green, green, green is the highest. But was it was black, brown, gray, then green, right? <coughs> oh, no, black, brown, white, gray, and green. Am I getting that right? Am I gonna have to Google the card order? No, we'll just do it like the one. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll do that. So, uh, Alexander, is there a general uh, uh, way to give uh, orders for someone to, for for the way that they would help you out with your work? Um, other because they'll they'll clear things up in here to to make it more livable, and then if they're 
I, well, I guess it's Tatia talking to Alexander. Um, if we're going to help them, uh, have them clean up, is there any other general things that we could do to have them help you with crafting or what else do we need right now? Can you, uh, like, let, let, let's come up with our little list and see how long, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what they uh, quote us. <laughs> I don't know the ways to make the craft, the enchantment part more efficient. Uh, base items definitely could use help with, with the armor and whatnot. Um, How so? Oh, I can't make a sword if people need a new sword, but I can make it magic. Yeah. Um, I don't have good skills to share my workload with others, but it sounds like Silas is kind of a specialist in making that stuff more efficient. Yeah. And he did say that he was crafty in the ways of firearms, so maybe something along those lines to beef him up. Yeah, as far as I know, we've only got the EMP pistol we're actually keeping of the firearms currently, but... But do you want to keep one of the several that you boosted with Big Cole? Also, I'm, I asked, I'm asking. I'm just curious. Yeah. No, I also had the thought that I could potentially enchant a firearm with uh, the training feature and give it uh, exotic firearms proficiency so anybody would actually be proficient with it when they hold it. Yeah, what, about nice. that, what about that unlimited ammo boost? I... <laughs> Don't believe that works on the uh, tech nice. firearms, but if it does, I believe that only produces arrows and bullets and things. Mm -hmm. uh, I did find the key card levels, so it goes in ascending yeah. order. Brown, black, white, gray, green, yeah. and then other colors we don't have right now, so yeah. we can put it in uh, gray. Yeah, and that would keep the riffraff out at least, yep. if that's doable. The riffraff. You can try. You make me an engineering check. I think I can assist. Um, um, Silas steps forward to help as well. I don't think I help much. That is your way. If it's engineering, or is it disabled device, or it's engineering. Silas gets a twenty-three. Uh, oh, 24. I didn't roll that great. Um, so, oh, no. It would be 26. That, that I rolled a 2 on. Uh, Silas, additionally, because of what he is and how it works and what he's got, I believe... Oh, he's got inspiration. That's right. He has all kinds of nonsense. Um, he gives you a plus th 5 to the roll instead of a plus two. Nice. Ooh. So then, yeah. Because of his traits and wonderfulness. Sweet. Mm, you're Great. welcome, sir. I think we got the two out, two boundary doors to do, basically. Yeah, oh, the, it's like an airlock. Know. It's like an airlock, right? So the outer one and the inner one. Well, there's the airlock, and then there's the secondary airlock that was to the left that the little gremlin things were in that leads directly to the <laughs> lower level where the reactor yeah, controls Yeah, that's work. right. Yes, that's fair. There's a second door. Do you do it both outer doors? I think so. Okay. So roll yeah. again. Silas will help you again. Uh, I, I assist this time, so an extra plus two for me. Uh, 32. Jesus. That's better. Let's see. A 17 from Silas, which is sufficient. So that's a bunch of help and a big score. You, you reprogram the doors to, what did you say, green? Gray. I think gray. Gray, the highest one you've got, and you've only got one of those key cards. No, right? no, no. Got a, green is the highest, highest and we only have one. Gray, uh, we have a couple. Yeah. Do you have a couple of gray? <laughs> yep. I oh, think I've two. got one. Uh -huh. yeah. I got a gray, and uh, Alexander's got a gray. I ain't keeping yep. no track of your things. Yep, gray key card. Ah, uh, look, you're already starting to get a list there. Wait. What? You're oh my god, there's a Discord list? We're getting there. 
Yeah. I've not been on Discord. I got to be on Discord now. <laughs> Too many I things open, man. I gotta... Oh, sorry. I've added a new um, a new channel to the Discord. <laughs> Zardoz is that supposed to be? Yes. yes. <laughs> Might want to take the P out of it. Yep. <laughs> All right, so what, we're, what, we're, what we're fully expecting is you to watch some of this and then um bourbon nostalgia that's what it's called <laughs> nice i love bourbon it nostalgia, what? cold check oh, the night stalker zardoz zardoz is definitely one. on the list i gotta watch that babylon 5 yep Babylon 5 is amazing. You get you get past half of the first season, it really starts picking up. Ugh. I like the first season. Yeah, I the love first, it. The first several it. episodes are slow, though. They're building characters and stuff. Oh, but my God. Start, it's, one of the first, it's one of the first series that had an overarching storyline, but you don't recognize it at first. It kind of creeps up on you that there's a bigger story involved, and so it's, it's actually quite nice. Epic. Got, got some busy times there, Wit. I do. I'm going to have a very busy week. A busy week? Did it take you more than a week? Oh, uh, probably. Oh, my God. I got to stop yawning. Oh, I'm tired. Got a hard really? time. You've been, you've, been, been, you've been snowboarding. No, it's the puppy. Oh. Are you crate training him? Uh, so I am. I uh, And she's great. But she also, I, I I want her to, you know, potty train. I'm trying to take her outside all the time. And I, when I don't keep her in a crate all the time, I, I can probably total time spent in the crate each day during the day can sometimes be in between like two and four. Two and three hours, maybe, on a good day. Uh, spread out in chunks, usually, because mm -hmm. she, like, goes in there and she'll soothe and she takes a nap. But if she doesn't soothe, I take her out. So, I'm like, I feel like everything that I read online that is suggestions for what you're supposed to do all conflicts each other. It's like, you're supposed to put them in there and you're supposed to let them soothe themselves. But don't let them get fussy because then they get too fussy. Then they're never going to want to back it, go back in. I'm like, where is the fucking middle ground here? And how do I know where it is? So I'm, I'm tired because I feel like I never stop hovering over her to make sure that yeah. I'm not screwing her up. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's we've got to. Yeah. And I mean, like yeah. with my other dog, Ditto, whenever he was a puppy, I tr was working and he went to work with me for a little bit. And then I went to work with you and I couldn't take him to work with me anymore. And so I had to hire somebody to come and check on him during the day. And yeah. she was really crappy at her job and she would never show up on time. And I'm like, I hired you to come at like lunch. And I understand if you want to come at like one or 11, but coming at like four in the afternoon, I'm going to be home in an hour and a half. Like, what's the point in you taking out my puppy? And poor Ditto, he just didn't have good consistent training. And he's a Aww. good boy. I just feel like it didn't help with his anxiety whenever he was younger to not have... Uh, yeah. as much consistency as I would have liked for him. So. Yeah, that's a tough one. So I feel like I'm overstressed about Ahsoka and making sure that I'm like a good puppy mommy. <laughs> uh, real so, children are hard and puppies are like also hard. So the real, only real children. Established. Yeah, yeah, real children are the only ones that have therapy bells. Dogs don't, so. <laughs> oh, and I look at Ahsoka, and Ahsoka's like, but I'm way cuter. It's true. You are so much cuter than Isaac. <laughs> Isaac, but Isaac doesn't squat down in the middle of the living room and leave a big steamer right there. Ah, uh, like, that you know of. <laughs> and I know yeah, of. That's <laughs> Uh, my teenager is crazy. No, I'm just kidding. Isaac would not. Uh, I'm not getting enough, enough attention. 
Oh my God. I, I can literally can't imagine a, what Evan looked at me and I, I guess he's saying, don't put it past our son. <laughs> Surprise mom. Oh my God. Well, it's the truth though. You know, kids, they're, they're all about, you know, Hey mom, take, taking you your shit on the carpet. You knew what I would do. But guess what? You you know, it, it's not worse, but it's way different. <laughs> That's uh, it's not better. It's not worse, but it's just yeah. Oh, children. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, so this game. So we have Fort Wit established. Yeah, you're all set with. That'll take you a minute or two to get through that list so far. That's a good beginning list. All right. Yeah. So cool. uh, well. It, We'll expect some reviews as you go. I like Logan's Run is a good one. That's a good beginning. Mm -hmm. That's a good. I didn't know there was a. Somebody said something about the series. Like that mm. was there's a TV series. Oh, yeah, God, I know the movie with Michael York, but yeah, they did a TV series with um, uh, Logan and Jessica recast and a android traveling about the wastelands in their little hovercraft trying to uh, find sanctuary while pursued by a Sandman. Right. I mean, why would you cast? Why would you recast Jenny Agatha of all things? Yeah, Wait, because kidding. you couldn't afford her breasts. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> what? Jenny Agatha's breasts. Yeah, that yeah. original, the original Westworld. Who's in with Cole Cole Brenner was really good. Agatha. Agatha. A G U T T E R. Like, oh. She's in the Avengers. She's in everything. <laughs> yeah. Just like, oh, oh, what's your face? She's in, in um... She's in American Werewolf in London, for heaven's sake. Oh yeah, she's brilliant. Yeah, true, in that. but. She was in Avengers too. What'd you say? Yeah, she's like Senator something something in like um, the Avengers. Oh, okay. When you do, um, oh, uh, wow. Oh, oh, it's another one. Which you do, um, Life Force. Oh yeah, Life Force should be on that list. That's a good one. Oh, that's a great movie. That's pretty risque. I have um, um, Patrick Stewart in, but uh, yeah, it's got Patrick Stewart as well, which is great. And um, oh, what's your face's breasts? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that that girl who just is naked the whole time, you mean? Well, yeah. Yeah, she's With amazing. Gravity to find totally natural breasts. Exactly. Right. Oh, that, my that gosh. Helps me through my formative years. She's really cute. I mean, now Ginny? she's older, this Ginny Agator. Yeah, she's, she's on Call the Midwife now. Yeah, she's on Call the Midwife now. That's true. What's Call the Midwife? <laughs> It's a TV series from home about midwives. Oh, which reminds me, I just got BritBox. Is it going to be on there? Possible. Cool. Because I recognize that, and it showed up on Amazon, and I was like, oh, call the midwife. Ne oh, it's on Netflix. There you go. You can watch it on Netflix. I can do that. It's called the midwife. It's a BBC period drama. Yeah, I told him, mate, that's that's life force chick. Yes, that's right. But the cover of it looks so cheery. They're all smiling. Oh yes. It's uplifting in that in that way that it can bring you down so it can bring you up again, you know. <laughs> that's funny. But isn't uh, that more like a dark So comedy? Life Force Life Force admittedly had gratuitous nudity, no. but I thought it was actually a pretty good sci fi story, actually. Gratuitous Necessary for the advancement of the plot, I believe. I think so. I think that's you're not wrong. Necessary for the advancement I, of the plot. I, I, and, <laughs> and when you put Steve Brails back as the main lead, you need something to offset that. <laughs> she brings up the charisma to a net zero, maybe. <laughs> so what's substance? Uh, that oh, that's got stuck in my hair. What is big about East London in the fifties and sixties? What do you mean? Is East London the fancy part of London? There's no fancy parts of London. Well, then what's East End of London? What does that mean? It's what the East context? End. It's, yeah. it's the, have you ever watched East Enders? Now you have BritBox. Yeah. You get to do that. Watch ah! East Enders. Just all, pick all a, 147 just pick a, seasons. Yeah, just pick a random season of it and just pick a random episode and just start watching it. And then about 20 minutes in, realize that you probably are just happy you're not those people. Why? It's a soap opera, and it's been running a very long time. Oh, no. I, I now, I, 
I'm going to look it up. <laughs> I did have some flashbacks from EastEnders when I was in Salisbury and we were like sitting having breakfast in a place and there's like oh, a group yeah, of yeah. old guys in there drinking beers talking about how like their their uh, grandsons and stuff were all on the drugs and stuff and they had no ambition and yeah. You know. That sounds about right. Don't watch EastEnders, it's appalling. Don't do it. Okay, well, too late. Or Coronation <laughs> Street. That's another thing you now have access to with BritBox, which I believe is our longest-running soap opera. Right. Oh, like the, uh, oh. That's fake British, though. What is? Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. Oh, yeah, Peaky Blinders. Well, it's fake British. I mean, it's uh, uh, black, Pe- black country. Yeah. Pe- Peaky Blinders is fake British? Yeah. Why do you call it fake British? It's choking, I hope. <laughs> uh, I was like, but I thought it was actually a BBC show. I, I heard I heard good things about Still Game. I've been wanting to kick that out. Oh, I heard that, that was a really good Scottish sitcom. I heard that that was oh. highly rated. Well, we watched a police procedural one that I can't, it is Rob Lowe came, came over as a uh, head of a police in one of these boroughs oh. that was just kind of like, it was kind of crazy. It was like Captain Bo- Bull or something like that. Rob Lowe. Yeah. Randomly, to... Rob Lowe shows up as some nobody side bit in a British television show. Yeah, it's I... the main character in it. Hold on, he was the main character in it. Yeah. Hold on, which show was this? Uh, Wild Bill. Wild Bill. Oh, I love we, Rob Lowe. We know the show He's gonna like be doing such a nice tonight. human. <laughs> He's such a nice human. He is. Like, have you? Uh, do have you ever read? Okay, so uh, Rob, except for the whole. I'm already going to answer prison. this for you. You haven't, so I'm going to tell you. He has been in a very long relationship with his wife, and they are very much in love, and they are in a adorable couple and whenever he talks about her his like face lights up and he's like she's my bestest friend uh, in the whole world this was after after and, and his, that was after uh, he got out of prison yeah. from the pedophilia right what <laughs> didn't he wasn't wasn't he on a on tape with an underage girl and that's why he went to prison who i'm low what he, that's why he he was gone forever from Hollywood because he was in prison and now he's back, right? Like, yeah, what was that was Rob Lowe, right? Rob uh, Lowe sex tape, and he got <laughs> there. There were some scandals, but yeah, yeah, well, I, he, I he wouldn't was, be typing that into my computer, Bella. Yeah, sixteen year old girl, sixteen year old girl. Um, well, I guess underage, depending on where you're at, but but. So now, now that we've got Fort Wood established, I do <laughs> still have a yeah, talk with, back uh, here. <laughs> with Connor Bain and the uh, clerics of Pry to mm. tell them my intentions of, of bringing uh, Sandville back to life. Oh, you're going to bring Sandville back to life? Well, I've been keeping his chunk of brain fresh <laughs> for that. I mean, it's true. <laughs> at least do the attempt. I think I, I think I popped some bubbles for poor Wit. I'm sorry, Wit. I thought you knew. <laughs> I believe you've traumatized an she's apple. Looking, I had no she's idea. She's looking. She's looking like I just kicked a puppy in front of her. <laughs> oh, dang. oh dear. Sorry, my what? dear. Well, okay, so here's what I'm reading. The film Sexual Encounter made during the 1988, which by the way, I was two. I was two. Yeah, fuck you. I was a junior Ouch. in high school. So. Ow. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> the, film, you that thing. the film Sexual Encounter, made during the 1988 Democratic National Convention, was brought up during the 55 year old star's appearance on Sirius XM's The Just Blah Blah Blah. blah. The problem was, I didn't make blah, any money blah. off of it like everybody does now. I was too stupid, he said with a smile. But uh, I woke up one day and I was like, Oh, people talk about it. I think what what is it? What is it? I don't know, dude. What, 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 what he basically did he do? All he it basically does is like met about reflecting, but it doesn't say what it was. So, just that so it was a here's sex the thing. Oh, 
here's the thing. In 1989, like- the St. Elmo's Fire actor faced a lawsuit from the mother of a 16-year-old girl involved in the tape. Lowe denied knowing the girl was underage. Right, because he met her in a nightclub where you had to be 21. She had a fake ID. So in Rob Lowe's defense, you could argue that he had legitimate reason to believe she was 21, and she should have been, but wasn't. She lied, got in with a fake ID. They hooked up, taped it, and then it became national news. And then I believe, I thought he was at least kicked out of Hollywood, if not served a prison sentence for that. Blacklisted for a while, kind of. But yeah, but I thought he was. I thought he had a prison term, but I could be wrong. But uh, anyway, that was just uh, it's something people should know. But I don't. I don't know enough to say if it was quote quote his fault or not. But there you have it. Aww. So, yeah. Well, he was quoted here. It says, people talk about it, and I go, I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me, he continued. Honestly, I do, because it got me sober. Sober got me married. I've been married 29 years, and I have two great sons. I don't think any of that happens without going through that scandal. I really don't. So, yeah, I mean, he's, he's turned his life around, and I applaud him for it, right? It's not Aww. like he's, a, he's not a Jared Fogle or... You know, some of the other horrible people. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't know that about him. But, man, he's done, he's done good for himself since then. So I, I respect that. So, so also, stay, so stay I definitely clean, know sir. people that had sex with people that were over 21 when they were under 21. And, oh, I know people on both sides of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I knew a guy that... Uh, uh, you know, we were we were out in Ann Arbor, and he had to he had to go pee, and none of the businesses were open or let them go in to use the bathroom, and he wound up taking a leak behind a building in an alleyway. The cops shined a light on him, and oh, now he's on no. sex offenses because of public exposure. Yep. And so yep, that's why we tell Isaac he should not uh, do that. It's like you yep. <laughs> put it away. Even when you're camping. So that, that's where you get like a Jackie Gleason quote from Smokey and the Bandit. Swallow it. I'm busy. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what are so you playing with that wit? A back scratcher, but it could be a, a, a tiddly whittler or something. Ah. I don't know. It's, it is a back scratcher. It, it's a back scratcher. I have to fidget. You know me. So I'm uh, I do. I do. Yeah. So are, you, so are we getting to a point where you're – so what are you asking these people? Well, it sounds like that there is some boost and benefit that they can to help Alexander with research. And. Oh, no, Alexander's going to ask um, the clerics of Bry and uh, Conair Bain about resurrecting Sandville. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, Reincarnated because I don't have access to re- resurrection yet. But I understand, especially from. Severus Slade that it is proper protocol to inform allies of your intentions and plans uh, before you enact <laughs> them. Uh, I um, like that. So I'd I like, like to... Before you bring them. him back as a badger. Well, that's not possible on the current new charts for Pathfinder. No, no badgers. There is an ex- expanded chart, but... Um, could come back as a bugbear, though. That's pretty great. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I was like to... shit on that extended chart. Yes. They come back as an freet, which seems a bit bizarre. What? That's extra planar. You can't. It comes yeah. back. It could come back as a fetchling, like you. Yeah, sure. That's a native outsider, though, right? So that's okay. But yeah, the freet, the freet is actually a primordial elemental, right? There's the strange things on this list. The shabti's an odd one too. How do you come back as a shabti? By rolling badly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but aren't, aren't they like aren't they like immortal like creatures from like like pharaoh pharaoh statues immortal like pharaoh statue creatures something like that those are cool looking well, shabti yeah uh, you know, um i guess i would inform them of my uh intention to do this and see if they have an opinion on whether i sh- not or should especially since he was a technic agent and that i'm now re- Realizing that I probably did not ever mention to them previously in Torch. <laughs> I uh, so Conor Bain is. I've I've known Sandville a long time. I think you should be guided by your 
instincts in this. If you thought he was a good man in the end, then it is your choice whether or not to attempt to do this for him. Uh, Dinvaya doesn't give a damn. I, I, she has no invested interest in this man or whether you bring him back to life or not. And um, the guy whose name we none of us can remember. Um, Kanye yeah. Sandhill. The, the, the Bry? The, yeah. The yeah. Bry? Um, I can't remember either. I'm not looking. Um, he's he, he used to know Samville pretty well, and he is. He, please do as you're guided. Bry's hand guides us all. Um, I guess I'm going to attempt it then and see if it uh, works. I, I think what kind of resources so are you expending for that? It's. I mean, I'm expending he, my own personal resources and the chunk of his brain that I've kept alive. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> All right. So now let's just look at this as a snapshot. This is what could happen to you guys if you die. Yes, which is why I've asked if you would all please reveal what your cultural preferences are on your body disposal and with, if you're open to reincarnation as opposed to resurrection and stuff that's much more powerful and I'm not able to do yet. <laughs> I'm mean, all right do, with it. Do, do you want to come back as a badger? Is what he's saying. I want to come back as a turtle. The sexiest lizard folk of no man. That's right. Hey, baby, let me lick my eyeballs. That's so hot. <laughs> there is the, <laughs> the other GM's choice that is. I like other GM's choice. You come back as a I don't know Tarask or a <laughs> or a reverse centaur. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> what about what, what, what about a vampiric Kender? Nobody likes reverse center. <laughs> <laughs> reverse mermaid. <laughs> That's so right. Reverse mermaid. It's funny. Yeah, reverse fish mermaids are pretty funny too. Yes. Fish, fish heads with lady lady parts. It's pretty funny. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that would be less scary than the reverse center. <laughs> So I don't know. At the same time, reverse centaur is kind of Bojack Horseman-y. Yeah. Well, so. given, given that I haven't heard any uh, uh, things, I'm going to spend the ten minutes and thousand gold to try and reincarnate Sandville and see if he's able and willing to return. Okay, you spend your time with Sandville's brain. Will Sandville come back? How long has it been? It's been a month, right? It's been a few weeks, yeah. but I've been keep, keeping it fresh with gentle repose, which works for most things. They don't mention it with reincarnate, but I think that's because they just weren't thinking. It's the limitation yeah, for reincarnate. Uh, this spell can bring back a dead creature in another body, provided that the death occurred more than no more than a week before the casting of the spell, and the subject's soul is free. So it has to be a week. It it does say that there. Everywhere else, for like re all the other raised deads and stuff, it's it's mentions actually like things like general repose and stuff can keep them fresh enough but yeah, so that's true if the subject soul is not willing to return the spell does not work since the dead creature is returning to a new body all physical effects are repaired the conditions remain blah 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 as long as a small portion i'm happy to allow it longer than a week you've been hey. gentle reposing it hey uh, i hate for you uh, have to keep it fresh for even longer <laughs> uh, how about we ask the twitch people hey let's do like the uh the caesar uh, gladiator combat, thumbs up or thumbs down? Does Sandville want to come back or not? <laughs> thumbs up. Oh, I just get screwed out of a thousand gold for oh, right. Everybody good. thumbs downs you. You should definitely not ask. <laughs> you should definitely not ask this fucking crew. They'll all say down. No, they'll, they'll all say yes, and they yeah, want to all pick. Say they yes want to pick which you... table. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of fact, they're going to be like, when you do it, you should do it on a diamond. Etch well, it. Well, well, that's where you do it on the, uh, uh, you know, X bits donation to to give a plus or minus to the, you know, reincarnation roll. You know. <laughs> or, or someone uh, pays the uh, random encounter and it's some kind of freaking, you know, Cthulhu thing going on here. Uh, oh Sunville comes. Sunville comes back as as an ogre. <laughs> Reincarnated creature. Get it on with the two headed female Etten. He seemed to be doing pretty good by us, and he might be, you know. Wanting to start a new life or be, you know, 
help us out in the future. I think, I think they do know who, on the other side of the veil, they do know the caster of the reincarnation and all that kind of fun stuff. So, Yeah. That's why he's got to be willing to come back. Okay. So, Sanville gets his call from your wonderful casting. You spend far too much money on trying to bring Sanville home. Um, United States calling. Do, do we want the official table, which is reasonably sensible, or the unofficial table, which might be crazy? My problem with the unofficial table is it has Android on it, which kind of breaks some of the known things I know it has, about Android. It has a bunch of stuff on it that shouldn't be on this table. How True. about How about... You? How about you make a couple of rolls? Let's say make three percentile rolls, and we'll I mean, see what we get, and I'll make a choice. I really want the old uh, AD&D table, but... Yeah, yeah, old school, baby. <laughs> uh, right where he could actually come back as a badger. Yeah. Yes. But it's a badger, badger that has... Well, shrew, at least well, if you're shrew. a spellcaster, you weren't, you weren't screwed because you could actually cast spells still. Right, you'd be a spell badger. Spell <laughs> badger. Oh, oh God! A, a badger, a honey badger that was a. Uh, God damn! What was his class again? He was a. Uh, he 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 cast spells, but was still a melee fighter. What was that class again? Uh, it was a lot a uh, spell sword. Yeah, something like that. Oh, what what is Sandville? You mean? Yeah, seventy-five. All right, I'm going to look at both tables. So seventy-five unofficial would be human. 75. <laughs> would still be human. And 33. 33 would be gnome. On the unofficial... Reroll what's that second 75. 50. 57. <laughs> would be half-orc on the official table. So you have gnome, half-orc, and human on the official table. Oh, Unofficially, kind of... you have gnome, uh, halfling, and Lashunta. Lashunta oh, from Starfinder? Game. Yep, Lashunta from Starfinder. That wow. sounds cool, because that might be bonus for his class that he was. It may oh, also yeah. not be bonus for his class. Yeah, the gnome might be kind of cool, too, because uh, in Galarian, they're an immortal, right? They only they, they live forever until they get the bleaching and they get bored. Well, they don't. Well, yes and no. They, yeah, kind of. As long as they continue to get uh, in, interesting experiences, they can fend off the bleaching. Yeah. So if they hang out with a, you know, just say a, a hedonist extra planar creature that doesn't age very easily, they could find all sorts of new experiences. Just saying. What do we say? Gnome, halfling, or lashunta? That's super interesting. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is pretty funny. Okay. Well, just not a nice little. Uh step up in some ways. I mean, is it a step up, Lashunta? Well, it depends whether he comes back as male or female as Lashunta, because they have uh, sexual dimorphism, right? They do. And antenna. Yeah. Yes. This is kind of fitting with uh, Numeria and... Uh, yeah, I mean, Lashunta, like... yeah, that's fair. I mean, would you like a telepathic person wandering around with you? Depends if he's really allied or not. I mean, I'm guessing I'd hopefully get bonus points for having brought him back to life, but you know. Ah, oh, welcome, life. telepathy. I mean, ultimately, they don't have to speak, right? They're fully telepathic with anyone within 30 feet. Yeah. Which is pretty great. And they also have the alternate racial ability, insidious telepathy, which means yeah. they can fiddle you a bit to make them appear more <laughs> nice. So... You're you're you can fix bully gut for me. <laughs> right, just to sneak in and telepathically. Okay, so a body begins to form. I'm gonna take an hour for it to fully form. Are we gonna are we gonna resolve the 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 final casting in this session or are we gonna leave that as a cliffhanger for the next time? I mean we can easily leave it as a cliffhanger as what does Sandville become? Um, that would be quite interesting as we have rumbled on a little bit. Cast I think we're at a point now Discord. where you've actually done most of your housekeeping and you're probably ready to yep. move forward. So the followers of Wit have started tidying up. They've pitched some, <laughs> they've pitched some tents just inside that desert area and they're, um, they're living there for the moment. I, I can donate my goo tubes to them if they... Uh... <laughs> They, they, they seem happy to pop out into town and buy actual food. 
Hopefully we can make an elevator for him or something to. Which is know. funny because we haven't bothered to eat like this whole game. Uh, well, I assume you're eating most of the time. <laughs> I mean, this isn't this isn't like Darksome where you have to keep track of every ounce of water you're carrying. Uh, so, that seems like it could get really that, that's, annoying. That's why I got that ring. <laughs> well, I mean, two of the party now have a ring of sustenance, which means they don't need to eat at all. Oh wow! Okay. So, I mean, ultimately, well, Darkson's amazing, except for when you're a party that has a half giant, a Thrykreen, and any of anybody else. Well, the Thrykreen because they can't communicate with anybody else. Well, I mean, you could learn Thrykreen, but in the original version, it cost you, was it two or three language slots to learn the yeah. language? And, yeah. um,. Yeah, they actually want to eat. The, worst, the best part is the party made of a Thrykreen and an elf. So the whole time the Thrykreen's just salivating at the thought of eating the elf. Well, well, and I love that you have like, if you're an uh, actual mage, it's like you drain all the nature around you if, when you cast any well, magic. Well, you're, you're, you're two versions of a mage, right? You're the preserver yeah. and the defiler. So defiler's magic is easier and they level faster, but preserver's don't kill the land when they cast spells. Yeah, it's sort of like druids versus sorcerers kind of thing. Well, there's druids as well, but they're locked to specific land features in Dark Sun. Oh, okay. So there are druids, they're just very different. I love how halflings are cannibalistic and tribal in Dark Sun as well. That makes me super happy. Uh, yeah, that speaking was pretty cool. of halflings, so yeah. I have a very stupid novice question here, but why are they, are they, is that something like written, I, 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 I know it's not necessarily the most PC thing to say that you're supposed to feel a particular way towards somebody based off of their grouping, like orcs and things like that. Uh -huh. But I mean, like, oh. why do, is that also a part of halflings? Do they typically get picked on? I mean, no, not really. They tend to kind of be very... Most halflings don't travel. Most halflings stay at home. They eat their food. They do their job. They have a happy time. They so, are underestimated by most other races, so they're yeah. dismissed to some extent. Okay. But I mean, they're just short, right? It doesn't mean they're incompetent. Nobody view It's a personal view, as, and we're depending on your experience of halflings as to whether you think they're whatever they may be. I mean, that's your own personal, your character's own personal bias, if you want yeah. to bring that. And yeah, there's nothing well, wrong with that. If you've had experience and all the halflings you've met have been thieving little devils, then maybe that's your opinion of all halflings. <laughs> if you've traveled to where halflings live in towns and you see that they're nice, happy, half-living, family-friendly people, then you might have a different opinion. But that's true of anybody and any experience anywhere. And if you choose to generalize, then that's your choice. Ah, well, I don't think I would want to generalize them. I just wanted to clarify whether or not that was something that people tended to do. Because I, in Tatia's character, poked and they were like we're used to getting picked on and i'm like is that a character thing or is that a halfling thing well, so I, i'm wondering more for like personally like for me further role play gaming well that in my opinion and this is just me speaking i think that you are kind of like the senior desna representative that is kind of their superior to some extent so whatever you say goes if people are picking on them because, oh, look at the stupid athletes, <laughs> then it's almost on you. Well, like, what, one of them right? is actually a full-on fighter, so he's not that terrible. If anybody picks on them too much, I can lightning bolt them too. True. Good. <laughs> because I won't take anybody picking on my friends. At, well, correction, Tatsia will not take anybody picking That's on their friends, funny. except for Tatsia. Taktia will be doing all of the bullying because Although, I bully my friends because I love them. I want them to and, have and quite a good honestly, skin. Quite honestly, against most normal humanoids, like I'm almost invisible and unstoppable. Like they can't see me. I have like a 50% mischance. I can backstab everybody and kill them all. And, and I do have innervation, which is more subtle than a lightning bolt. Now. <laughs> yes. Innervation's a good spell. Innervation is like reverse Viagra, really. It just kind of sucks everything. It's you know, really like, terrible. It it is all the strength well, well. Or bone shatter, which I can do merciful now that I have the <laughs> rod of <laughs> merciful madman. You I, so I, want to do that, don't you? You just want it. You're itching to do that spell, are you? I love it. <laughs> we could do it, and then uh, Tatia will like come over and give you some like purple shimmery Desna juice to, to make it look like it's merciful. <laughs> 
Well, merciful just means I can't kill them by it. It's still like fractures every bone in their body moments. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so but horrifying. We're gonna add an air of mercy, <laughs> including teeth. Oh, you know what it fractures does? Fractures every bone powers. in their body gently. No, no, it do, it does what the it does the Harry Potter thing where it turns their it it just it just dissolves their bones. Oh, like, that's it, it right. Has, like, arms and stuff. What was the spell <laughs> that removed his bones whenever he broke his arms? Yeah. Well, it's not broken anymore. <laughs> yeah. right. then you that's have to take your that's can it's canon now. Yes, that's not canon. <laughs> nice. Yeah, hey, Hal, I, I sent know, you a let's chat. Let's make a wand of that. What is that? I'm now. I'm gonna look that up. Where did I you, sent send you a chat? Chat. I sent you a GM chat in uh, roll twenty. I have too many things. It's, that side, it, it's just a side. Yeah, it's a it's a roll the roll twenty chat for GM chat. Oh, the I, GM uh, whisper. Amendo. I do have um, Sandville's spellbook still too, that I can return to them once they are corporeal. The the closest place for that is um, probably the world wound bill. There's probably some stuff up there that might be, but okay. that place is incredibly chaotic. So anybody going there may never be seen again. Huh? Ha Maybe Ch Charlie. Chat is saying, I mean, that's far away. I mean, there's a lot of, everywhere you're sending them, it's going to be like five or 600 miles away, probably. Okay. All right. It's a big place. You're in the middle of it. It's a big place. Innovation is merciful. It sort of does no damage. Oh, that's very true. <laughs> it's, so it's a complete pacifist spell. That's how I'm reading it. Innovation. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad spell, though. It's a great spell. Hey, yeah. Voldemort, Voldemort once said, there is no good or evil, only power, and those too weak to seek it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <gasps> that was Voldemort? No, uh, I, I think that Quirrell also sounds that, like a but... Sith. No, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a follower of Asmodeus right there. <laughs> Everything that is, is That is very yeah. Sith-like. Are you going to start knocking levels off things and having me recalculate like stats for creatures on the fly? <laughs> Hey, you gave me the, well, the, the uh, yeah, Adventure Path fun. gave you the spell. It did. That sucks super hard. Hey, you're just, you should feel lucky that he never picked that one feat that had him do all that, like, math cal shit. Calculus oh. and trigonometry to figure out shit. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> what, at what point do you write that in one of these books and be like, here's a new feat? It only takes 26 pages to explain it. But, but it's based on knowledge engineering, which I've, Spent a ton of points into. I mean, you could, yeah, right. You'd be, be great at it, except for it actually comes down to the player being able to do math. Yeah. Well, well, or, it, so that or the it, DM it, being bad enough that the player rolls enough dice and it's like, yeah, you made it, okay. <laughs> yeah, just, 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 yes. So it's either it's either the tolerance of the DM to just say fuck it, I give up, or depending on how much alcohol thing is had, or how good he'll be with his character, right? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty powerful as a, it's pretty powerful as a feat, but it's also right. ridiculous as a feat. It's the kind of stuff that gets nerfed real fast, and right. I bet it's not. I'm guaranteeing you, it's definitely not uh, organized play legal. Oh, probably not. All uh, right, you, you want to call it here? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've sure. th thanks, thanks to Hal letting me purchase spells as part of my level up stuff. I've got access to all sorts of great spells. It's awesome, including spells that are technically druidic, like uh, the remove radiation or irradiate. Right, uh, they're on the druid list, and, and, and now I you like, have access to those, right? And I, and yeah. I like that because role playing wise, you've been exposed and have analyzed that firsthand. Well, his whole character is about all magic, not necessarily just wizardly magic, right? Right. But apart from that, 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 it's that, that new feat, right? That whole, what is it, friend of the forest or whatever it is. Blessing. Right. But yeah. we also had the uh, manticore, we had the, the toxic manticore that was irradiated. So he had that firsthand experience, so he was able to expand his magical repertoire in that way, right? Yeah. All, all right, right kids. Yeah, so cliffhanger. Watching, cliffhanger, we don't know how Sandville Trent will end up. Visit us on the Twitch. Right. Come back next time to see what kind of wondrous creature Sandville may return as. Come speculate on the Discord. Allies, visit us on enemy, the Patreon. All of those are the, the GM on the Discord. Yeah, get him to be, come back uh, as something oh, really no, no, no. awesome. Bribe the GM on the Patreon. That's a better yeah. place. Oh. <laughs> I am voting for. I am voting. I'm voting for a Kaitan. 
a, a chain devil. I don't. Well, I don't I know. believe we've already settled on Lashunta. It just depends on on how fast Kieran's going to try and seduce them. Well, it's on the bucket list. It, you know, there's. I mean, he hasn't seen one ever, but now it's on the bucket list. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would say it's pretty safe to say he probably has not seen a Lushunta. He's seen a lot of things traveling the plains, but not a Lushunta. No, Lushunta <laughs> probably aren't all that common on Galarian at this point. Aren't the aren't the Starfinder races kind of like banned? Like, no. isn't there some kind of Galarian? Uh, the whole uh, gap was Galarian. Yeah, kind Hal, of... Hal did tell me I couldn't take a Lushunta when I was looking at. Uh, uh... <laughs> Yeah, no Lushunters as actual. I mean, technically they added them to this, right? So the idea was, I guess they must have come down before everything went, the Galarian vanished, right? Mm -hmm. But who knows? I'd be interested to find out where they finally take that because I don't know whether they're ever going to do that uh, in Starfinder and like bring it back or whatever. Well, I just think they don't want to have a situation where I think it was the whole separation of fantasy versus sci fi. Otherwise, you're going to have. You know, oh, here's Cheliax, and here's uh, all of a sudden there's a bunch of stormtroopers coming down in starships with plasma rifles, and you know, like, you know, here's a here's a gnome with a wand of of, well, of uh, sparkles. You know, it's, and I mean, it really depends because, like, we back when you had AD&D, when Gamma World came out, and they went with they put the rules in the uh, AD&D DM's guide for going through that. Uh, people from D and D had no resistance to any of the magic and radiation, or the technology and radiation, and vice versa. It's like they were anybody from Gamma World was like instantly subjected to any of the failed spell saves. So, yeah, I mean, it goes back to the old school, which is almost like the dungeon crawl classics or some of the old yeah. clones. Where, yeah, yeah, you think you're a badass, don't you? Well, you can still be gobsmacked by you know. Uh, you run away from some fights. It's not like 5e or some of the early editions of, of Dungeons and Dragons or later editions of Dungeons and Dragons where, well, according to the math, uh, I'm in a I'm an adventure for a certain level and I'm of the level in this range. So therefore, all the encounters are going to be within my capability of defeating. It completely removed the entire dynamic of running from a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Like everything is like, oh, no one runs from a fight. They're just going to stick it out. Well. There's been fights in some games that, you know, like Dungeon Crawl Classics or, you know, whatever, even Gamma World, right? Where you're like, you're going to get your ass handed to you. You better run. <laughs> well, I mean, look at what Hal's rolling up on the random encounter stuff. There's stuff in there that we did not <laughs> handle. But if we did somehow manage to pull it out of our ass, we would level. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's yeah, the like problem, a murder right? robot that you did that one time that did just that almost murder destroyed robot. It. it wasn't even down to half hits when it ran away. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't really trying, honestly. The, yeah, the, part, the, part, the part that I wasn't using was its burst attack, which would probably have killed the whole party. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Good so gracious, I, GM. Well, what I did was I gave you a chance, right? I made it look like it was about to do it, so you all backed off, and then it did it. Ah, yeah. So, you know, it's, 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 these are the games you have to play to keep the party on their feet when they face something ridiculous. Either by <laughs> mistake mistake of GM or mistake of random rolls on tables. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now I know I don't have to keep casting General Pose on Sandville. I have to decide if I want to do that on the tentacle of the Kez 2. <laughs> I'll probably just keep that as a material component, but, you know. Right? A tiefling tentacle. <laughs> Uh, plus one, plus one female love toy. You, know, you can turn it into a wand or something. Yeah. All right, we're gonna say good night. Night, y'all. Nighty night. night. You're listening to the smooth sound of RPGMP3.com. Dungeon Dungeon Dungeon.